we, we are now being live streamed. Thank you. If I could just run through the fire instructions. We're not expecting a fire alarm. So if the fire alarm sounds, please make sure you leave by the nearest available exit. That's the door you came through and down the stairs, or there's a door, a fire exit in this corner here. And please don't use the lift. And then congregate in the front staff car park um, by the uh, exit. Thank you very much. Um, and the first item is to elect a chairman for the subcommittee for the municipal year. So members, do I have any nominations, please? Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any other nominations? In that case, Julia elected Councillor Alan Sharp as the chairman for the um, municipal year. Thank you, Chairman. Morning, everyone, um, and welcome to the meeting of the East Cambridgeshire uh, District Council Licensing Statutory Subcommittee, and welcome to those members of the press and public watching online. I will lay out the um, what procedure, how we're going to run this today, but first, uh, if I can, I'll do some introductions in terms of the people who are sat here so you, so you understand what our roles are. Um, I'm Alan Sharp. I'm the council member for the Wood Ditton Ward. I'm also chairman of council. Oh. I'm Councillor Jones. I'm Soham North. Hi, I'm Councillor Joe Webber. I represent Littleport. Um, I'm Maggie Camp. I'm director of legal services. I'll be acting as legal advisor to the committee today. I'm Lynn Bagwell, the licensing officer, uh, in taking the place of Stuart uh, Broom, the senior licensing officer, who unfortunately is not uh, available today um, due to being unwell. Thank you. I'm Caroline Evans, I'm a de uh, Democratic Services Officer, and I'll be taking the minutes today. Okay, okay, thank you everyone. So, yeah. uh, good morning, Karen C, Senior EHO. Good morning, um, PC Claire Metcalf, Peace Licensing for Cambridgeshire, please. Good morning, Ian Brown, Cambridgeshire Constabulary. Hello, I'm Tracy Cooper. I'm Democratic Services Manager and Deputy Monitoring Officer but today I'm here purely in the capacity to mentor Caroline. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know if the applicants want to introduce themselves. I'm Ross Taylor, I'm the owner of Willow Farm, applying for the licence. Morning, I'm Jane Gilliard, I'm the agent for the applicant. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, the meeting, this meeting is held under the jurisdiction of the Licensing Act 2003 and the Licensing Act 2003 Hearings Regulations 2005. This lays down that the, that legislation lays down that the committee of members to hear such applications must comprise three members, which is why you've got three members. It cannot be four, it cannot be two. The, legisl the legislation is quite clear on that. The order proceedings is that the licensing officer will appear first and will give a summary of the application. Um, and it will probably be, I think it's fair to say, maybe a slightly longer summary than we would normally do this because obviously we've got people, members of the public and press watching online. So we're trying to give as much information to them as possible. The applicant will then be asked to um, present their their case. Statutory con consultees will then, um, I'll, I'll go the way they're around, I'll go to Karen first and then the, the, the police second. And then non-statutory consultees, which are, which are the people sat in the audience, as I call them, um, will, will obviously come be able to come forward and, and state their case. 
Um, the normal things, can I just ask that everybody turns their mobile phones either to silent or off so we don't get any interruptions. Um, and then after those consultees, the applicant will then have a, an opportunity to sum up and bring up any points that they feel have been missed or, or not been. Yeah. What will happen on each of those, on each of the um, situations with the licensing officer, um, statutory consultees, the applicant, we as members will be able to ask any questions. And similarly, the legal officer and, and, and officers will be able to ask questions of um, either the applicant or, or somebody coming up, one of the members of the public coming up. Just to, what we're trying to do here is clarify and try to understand exactly the whole facts of the case so we can then make a, a judgment. The committee will, once all of that's gone through, the committee will then go into final, into closed session. Um, and the only person who will be in the room with us then will be Maggie Camp, who is the legal officer, and she will be purely there to, to provide us details of le legal advice. She does not get involved in the discussion. And under the legislation, we have up to, the council has up to five days to communicate the decision, although we would hope to communicate that a lot quicker, but that, that, that's the legislation that's laid down. Obviously, we're live streaming it. If at any time the live stream does go down, I will adjourn the meeting just to see if we can get it up relatively quickly. Obviously, we can't. We may well have to carry on the meeting without it, but obviously, we will certainly try to keep the um, live stream going because I know this is an um, application that a number of residents are very interested in hearing. And hopefully that just gives you an idea of how this this is going to run today. It, the, the final thing I'll say is obviously um, we're going to have a lot of speakers today. If I can ask you to be precise, you, you may obviously sometimes go over previous things that have been said, but if, if you don't need to make those points with your submission, then please do do not do so because we're I think we're going to be here for a fair time. But at the same time, we want I want to give the applicant and those people who have come here today the opportunity to say what they want. So moving on, um, item two is apologies and substitutions. Caroline. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. We have apologies from Councillor Lavinia Edwards and Councillor Joe Webber is here as a substitute. Thank you. Um, item three is declarations of interest from members. No. No, there are no declarations of interest in the right. Item four on the agenda is the application in respect of the SOAM, and that has now been no longer going to be heard today. So we move on to item five, which is the application for the grant of a new premises license um, under the Licensing Act 2003. The applicant, Big Sky Venue Limited, and the premises Willow Farm, Pymore Common, Pymore, Ely, Cambridgeshire. So if I could ask Lynn Bagwell to present the report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, for the benefit of those who may be joining on the internet, um, I intend to read the contents of the report in full. And I will also set out the amendments that have been submitted by the applicant in the period between the report being published and today's hearing. And before I start, all parties have been provided with a copy of a document called Appendix 6A. This is to rectify an error in Appendix 5 of the report containing the environmental health representation. The pages in Appendix 6A should follow the pages contained in Appendix 5. The purpose of the report is to consider and determine an application for the grant of a premises license in respect of Willow Farm, Pymore Common, Pymore. And the recommendations are that members consider the content of the report and all the evidence provided during the hearing and determine the application in accordance with the options contained in paragraph 4.4 of the report. On the 20th of May, 2022, Big Sky Venue Limited applied for a premises license under section 16 of the Licensing Act 2003 and this was for Willow Farm, Pymore Common, Pymore. 
The application was served on the responsible authorities and advertised in accordance with the regulations of the Licensing Act 2003. And the full application can be found in Appendix 1. The applicant seeks to license an area of land to hold festivals and events for up to 4,999 persons, including bespoke and seasonal events. And the activities and times applied for, there, there is a table which sets out the requested activities and timings. And for the sale of retail of alcohol, uh, for the consumption on and off the premises, the proposed hours are Monday to Sunday, 10 till 4 a.m. in the morning, the, um, uh, and 12 occasions per annum uh, starting um, at uh, uh, 400 hours to uh, 10 hours the next day. Uh, late night refreshment, uh, which is the uh, sale of hot food uh, and hot drink, uh, and that is for indoors and outdoors, and that will be Monday to Sunday, 2300 hours to 0400 hours the next day, and 12 occasions per annum, um, 0400 hours on one day to uh, 0500 hours on the next day. Uh, live music, recorded music, plays, indoor sporting events, boxing and wrestling, films, performance of dance, Anything similar to live music, recorded music and performance of da dance, all of the above um, um, uh, activities, uh, both indoors and outdoors, uh, Monday to Sunday from 10 a.m. Um, the morning of one, uh, one morning to 4, uh, 4, 4 a.m. the next morning and for 12 occasions per year, uh, 0400 hours on one morning to 10 a.m. on the following morning. And the opening hours will be Monday to Sunday, 10, 10, 10 o'clock uh, on, on, on one morning until 0400 on the next day, Monday to Sunday. And for 12 occasions per year, 0430 to 10 a.m. the next morning. The plan submitted with the application are found at Appendix 2. And further location maps and site photos provided by the officers can be found at Appendix 3. The applicant has a, a offered the following measures in relation to the four licensing objectives, that the Council Safety Advisory Group, um, and uh, SAC, which is uh, abbreviated to SAG, and the Licensing Authority <coughs> shall be informed at least 16 weeks prior to the event, the note which would be called the notice period of the intended event date. <laughs> The event date may be altered for operational reasons, but only with the approval of the SAG and the licensing authority. Risk assessments and event documentation forming part of the event management plan shall be supplied to the SAG and to the licensing authority during the notice period for their consideration. The event shall run in accordance with the company's festival event management plan approved by the licensing authority at all times, which shall be deposited with the licensing authority for their approval at least 14 days prior to any event commencement. Relevant notices will be erected at the entrance to the event, including the contact details of the event manager. And during the periods of regulated entertainment, an appointed person to be made responsible for orally monitoring noise levels at the boundaries of the site. Appropriate records of these inspections, including the time of the monitoring and any steps taken to reduce and control noise emissions at that time, if any. Such records to be made available on request from the local authority. Any age-related policy required by the Licensing Authority 2003 shall make uh, the Licensing Act 2003 shall make reference to the Challenge 25 policy and that all members of staff shall be trained regarding the sale of alcohol under this policy. All written records of the training will be maintained and will be made available for inspection by the police or an authorised officer. A refusal due diligence book will be maintained to record any refusal by, uh, to sell alcohol and be kept on site this will be made available for, uh, for inspection 
by the police or an authorised officer. And those were the, um, those were the uh, objectives, the conditions offered by the, um, by the applicant. During the 28 day consultation process, which is required under the Licensing Act 2003, the licensing authority received the following valid representations. Um, we received uh, representations from the police, which is at, at Appendix 4, Environmental Health, which is at Appendix 5, other persons objecting, 214 uh, objections were received, which are at Appendix 6, and other persons which were supporting the application, we received two in support, which is uh, at Appendix 7. And due to the number of persons submitting a representation, the main points from each representation have been set out in Appendix 6 to this report. The full versions of the representations will be available on the day of the hearing and, are, um, and that have been made available today for the benefit of the, um, of the committee. A summary of the points raised by those opposing the applications are shown in the table below. There were concerns over the wide extent of the licensing hours that were requested. Um, the offered conditions do not provide uh, sufficient time um, for um, uh, to be um, for the SAG uh, uh, to, to, to make uh, suggestions. The offered conditions may not be manageable depending on uh, upon the scale of the operation and general traffic management concerns due to location. The site is a rural location with unsuitable roads and footpaths incapable of dealing with the likely level of activity in the area, resulting in public safety concerns. There was accessibility for emergency vehicle concerns, increased crime and disorder as a result of people drinking and taking drugs. Concerns uh, regarding fire <coughs> outbreaks that may occur due to irresponsible behavior, general antisocial behavior from persons attending the events, Littering, drink driving concerns due to lack of public transport in the area, noise outbreak from the license board activities, light outbreak from the license board activities, general noise from the sites activities, protection of children concerns due to associated drug use at festivals and traffic issues, wildlife concerns due to noise and light pollution, public safety concerns due to drainage dikes and loose cattle in fields, Insufficient detail provided in the application to, in, be, to enable due, due to consideration to enable due consideration. Insufficient police resources resource levels in the district. Negative impact on nature reserves. Availability of hospitals in the area, which is very poor, and the effect on other businesses and the impact on wildlife generally. The points raised to support the application included economic benefits to local businesses, opportunities for local bands, opportunities for local people to enjoy um, local uh, events. And at the time of writing the report, no agreement between any of, the other uh, any of the parties had been made and no additional information had been provided from the applicant to address the points raised in the objections. However, um, the hearings regulations uh, permit the submission of supporting documents um, from the applicant up until the day before the hearing. In this period, the applicant submitted a number of documents for members' consideration, and these have been forwarded to all parties, include, and they include the following. On the 12th of July, a document listing the nature of the events for the venue was received from the applicant. On the 14th of July, Willow Farm description document, an additional con condition document, a feasibility plan, and a noise impact inspection and lighting scheme, uh, light pollution study, um, which was carried out um, for the rebuilding of the crisp factory were submitted. Um, on the 14th of July, and this was after work hours, um, an event management plan containing uh, headings only was sent by the applicants. Contained in these documents, the, application, the applicant has also offered the following amendment to the hours they are requesting. They wish to reduce the hours of the application from 10 a.m. Um, 
uh, on the first morning to 4 a.m. on the second morning to 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. On, uh, on the following morning. And that would be Monday to Sunday inclusive. And to amend the extended hours from 10 a.m. to um, 0400 hours <coughs> on the second morning for up to six occasions per year with 10 weeks prior notice. Um, I have been asked to also point out that this will obviously also amend the, um, the opening um, uh, timings. So that would mean that the for six occasions a year, um, the, the um, opening hours would be reduced um, um, to, um, oh, sorry, I'm sorry about this. Um, so the Monday to Sunday, the, it would be 10 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. Um, and but it would be this. It would be um, for the 12. It would be six occasions for a year um, that the hours would be reduced for the opening hours as well. So in conclusion, uh, the determination of the application, members are obliged to determine the application with a view to promoting the licensing objectives, which are the prevention of crime and disorder, prevention of public nuisance, public safety, and the protection of children from harm. In making a decision, members are also obliged to have regard to the statutory guidance under section 182 of the Licensing Act 2003 and the council statement of licensing policy. Should members depart from either, they must specify their reasons for doing so. Members must also take into account the information contained within this report and the evidence submitted, both written, if submissions of such information is agreed by all parties at the hearing and orally during the hearing. And the relevant uh, statutory guidance uh, considerations are at Appendix 8, and that's the licensing objectives, the applications for the premises license, determining applications, conditions uh, attached to the premises license, and the deregulation of certain entertainment and they are all specified in the pages under the relevant statutory guidance. The relevant local policy considerations are at Appendix 9, and the, um, the representations, conditions, licensing objections, objectives, prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, prevention of public nuisance, and protection of children from harm are set out in the sections uh, under, the, uh, under the relevant local policy. Members can determine the premises license application as follows. To grant the premises license, subject to the conditions that are consistent with the operating schedule <coughs> accompanying the application, modified to such an extent um, as members consider appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. And any mandatory conditions that may must be included in the license. Members can exclude from the scope of the license any of the licensable activities to which the application relates. And members can refuse to specify a person in the license as the premises supervisor, or members can reject the application. Members are asked to note that they may not modify or impose new conditions or reject the whole or part of the application merely because they consider it desirable to do so. It must actually be appropriate to do so in order to promote the licensing objectives and any such step must relate to the actual representations made. Conditions attached must, be, must focus on matters which are within the control of the applicant, i.e. the premises and its vicinity. Regulation 19A requires authorities to disregard any information given by a party or person that is not relevant to their application or representation and is not relevant to the licensing objectives. In determining the pre uh, premises license application, members must provide the reasons for their decisions and consider their responsibilities under the Human Rights Act 1998. When balancing the rights of the applicants and the rights uh, and the rights of those who may be affected. Any decisions taken must be appropriate and proportionate in the objective uh, being pursued. In particular, the following should be taken into consideration. Article six, the right to a fair hearing. Article eight, respect for private and family life. 
Article 1, First Protocol, post First Protocol, Peaceful Enjoyment of Possessions, which can include the possession of a license, and Article 14, the right to freedom from discrimination. There is a point of note on planning. Officers of the licensing authority believe that the proposed premises license do not hold suitable planning permission to cover the nature of the proposed activities. And any use would instead be relying on the temporary use of land for up to 28 days in any calendar year under the provisions of part four of schedule two of the general permitted development order. The existence of lack uh, thereof of suitable planning permission is not a reason in itself on which to base a decision, but officers feel it was useful information to include. The cost of convening a licensing uh, statutory subcommittee to determine an application is covered by the fees paid by licensing applicants. Should there be a decision to modify the premises operating schedule, exclude a licensable activity from the scope of the license, refusal to specify a person as a designated premises supervisor or to reject the application, the applicant can appeal to the magistrate's court. There will be costs associated with this process and the right of appeal is 21 days from the date of notification of the decision. Any person who made a relevant representations in relation to the application may appeal the decision. There will be costs associated with this process. The right of appeal is 21 days from the date of notification of decision. The equal impact assessment EIA is not required as this does not relate to a service provided by the council or a decision on a change of policy, but an application for license by an individual organization. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lynn. Um, thank you for that. I've certainly got one question, and before I open it to uh, members, I just want to clarify the out. I'm just looking at the email that the applicant sent in with the amended hours. I just want to, to clarify what the amended hours are as we stand at the moment. So the Sorry, sorry. The, Shall I read? Sorry, go on. No, no, the, no. The, the hours that have been proposed are Monday to Sunday, and that would be from 10 a.m. on, on the one day until 0400, 4 o'clock in the morning the following uh, day. And then there would be a break, and then it would be they could start again at 10 a.m. So if it was Monday, they could start Monday at 10 a.m. They could go forward until 4 a.m. on Tuesday, and then they could start again on Tuesday at 10 a.m. and then go through to four. That was that's what was proposed. Uh, okay. Sorry, if I... but what they've asked for now yeah. is that the there is a reduction, and it would be 10 a.m. on uh, on 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 Monday, and it would go then through to two o'clock on Tuesday, but they could still start again at 10 o'clock on Tuesday and go through to 10. And then they, um, they would still like the, obviously the extended hours, but these would be um, on uh, six occasions a year. So the, the extended hours would be from 10 a.m. until 4 a.m. the following morning, which would give 24 hours. So, but that has now been from 12 until 2. Okay, so if I can clarify, then my understanding of it um, is that the amend that the application we have in front of us, which includes the amendment, is from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Monday to Sunday inclusive, but then for 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. on up to six occasions per year with 10 weeks prior notice. That's what we, I believe, we're considering. And I'm getting nods from the applicant, so I just wanted to clarify that because I feel that's that's important. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. So over, Alec, Joe, any no, questions? Any questions from the plate on the um, licensing officers' comments now? 
yeah. Um, no, no on, on purely on what um, Lynn has read out. Um, no. Okay, fine, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, we now move to the applicant. Um, if they can give their their state the, the comments they want to raise with us, um, I'm go, I, I, I want to try and get everybody a fair hearing. So I'm going to try and keep it as concise and to time as possible. But at the same time, if I if it runs over a couple of minutes, then I'm not I'm not going to get worried. But if it's deviating, then I might try and stop you if that makes sense. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll I'll speak to the committee and then Mr. Taylor will just have a few words after if that's okay. So thank you for holding the hearing today. Um, as I've already introduced myself, my name is Jane Gilliard and I work in the licensing industry. So we've come to the, today to consider the application for the premises license on behalf of Mr. Taylor with a company called Big Sky Venue Limited. Mr. Taylor sits beside me here. The premises is subject to the application, the, sorry, the premises which is subject to the application, as you know, is Willow Farm. Mr. Taylor's home, his mother's home, he, he resides there as does his mother. It's an area which is predominantly rural, which is serviced by a ma the main B road. Mr. Taylor, as I'm sure he will inform you yourselves, is a prominent business holder in the area, has always lived here and has been successful with a number of businesses, having provided employment and stability for many in the area. It isn't, it never has been, and it never will be his intention to cause any problems here. This is where he lives. This is his home home pitch. And this this kind of, this is not the way that we intended it to go from the beginning. So there was a vision and that vision is becoming a reality by making an application. So Mr. Taylor has got the, has already got the site comprising what is currently an unused building with masses of allocated parking, as well as the secure external area, which incorporates this vision. So when the application was put in, it was put in on a very loose basis, simply because it was a business idea at that time. We've since, obviously, we saw the storm that it created, and we've looked at giving as much information, being as transparent as possible with regard to the application. The aim of the, the, the venue as such is to cater for all, with no exceptions. It's on the doorstep, it creates employment, it's attracting artists and individuals who can't be accommodated in this area currently, and lots more. So I'd invite you to have a look at the list of entertainment and activities that have been submitted. I know it's a little bit, um, it's not very secure in terms of, we, haven't, we can't name any data, we can't name any act or anything that are coming, because obviously the first step in this business is to secure the premises license. The application includes a number of self-regulating conditions promoting the four license and objectives as per the license and officer's report. We are here today to give full transparency and answer all the questions, allay any fears about the intentions going forward if a license is granted. What we've done so far is we've, we've actually reduced the hours that were originally applied for. So as the Chair's just said, we've, we've reduced them and there would be 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. on six occasions per year, up to from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. We've added additional conditions, which are in the appendix. I've got a training pack here that I can show you. That is by way of a book and a training book. I've got a full event management plan, which I was very reluctant to put on the internet because it's, this will be uh, an item that will be 
it's it's actually owned by Mr. Taylor, so I didn't really want to just put it on there for anybody to look at and copy. But you're excuse all more me, than excuse me, at it. excuse me, Chair. Yes. Are, are you submitting that? Are you intending to submit those today? Yes. Um, well, I'm afraid they're in an inadmissible unless all the parties agree right. that they can be. Um, that's my legal advice to the committee. Okay, thank you, mate. Well, how would that be determined? Do I have to request that? Well, we, we've got an issue. We're obviously, um, we, we've not had an opportunity to look at that um, plan. Um, and the legislation does lay down that um, anything can be submitted until midnight of the night before, including what that, that includes non-working days. So um, hence why we, we've obviously allowed certain amendments to come through. Okay, Chair, I understand yeah. that. I just didn't want it published on the internet for reasons mm. that I've just explained. Yeah. It will be copyright. It will be a copyrighted document. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Sorry, I'll just check in. I mean, if you were to submit it, would that mean it would have to be um, part of the published papers? No, I don't think that's what Alec meant, actually. What I think you meant was... It would it be published? Right? They were concerned about it being published. Yeah. If they were to submit it, it would be part of the published document. They, well, they, they would have had to um, submitted it, whether it was submitted in paper form, you know, like some of the, you know, we've had emails which hadn't necessarily been published. We've had stuff today that hasn't, you know, we've accepted up until the last uh, minute, um, which hasn't been published. I mean, some of this stuff we've got here has just been accepted through email, so it wouldn't have to be published. But it's the fact that it's been submitted today on the day of the hearing. It's inadmissible unless all the parties here today agree that they wish to accept it as part of the application. Mm -hmm. We've got the headings, it's just the content of it. Is it? I think I was published. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, our, our feeling here is we, at this stage we cannot accept it because of the, it would need to be agreed by every... Sorry, Maggie, did, did you want to come in? I was just going to say that um, if you wish to, the statutory authorities to comment as well. Yeah, I don't know if the police want to comment, but it would need to be agreed by everybody, and that would include people sat in the audience as well. Um, yeah, so uh, we, the police, wouldn't um, seek to want to receive it at this late hour to be agreed by everyone so i'm sorry we cannot that's fine i mean we yeah. I, I, I cascaded my decision yeah um last week because as i say it's a, a document that i want to have copyrighted and i didn't want it to be on public on, on the public view for that reason because that's the way that will be going with that the event plan the event plan management management so thank you thank you for that for that um, consideration um We've submitted the noise and light pollution reports, which we carried out last year, albeit it was for the planning application. However, it does give an insight into those, um, those the situation as it was, as the report finds with the light pollution and the noise um, issues. We've got personal license applications for two individuals ongoing. Um, the four license objectives are fully promoted and we've actually added some additional conditions last week, which are in the bundle as well. 
um, we'll work with the authorities on whatever time scale suits. Um, I mean, some of the events will take probably nine to 12 months to plan. So that's the amount of time that everyone will know about the events. It'll be fully transparent. And I'm talking about that's the bigger event. Um, the inside, the, the other events that we'll talk that, that are listed on the sheet are wedding, wedding receptions, those sort of events, um, evening speakers with, with dinners and things, they would be inside the building so they would have no impact on the outside areas anyway. Um, as per East Cambridge District Council Licence and Policy, um, the, objectives, the objectives are the only matters to be taken into account in determining the application and any conditions attached must be appropriate to achieve the licence and objectives. Um, we've got risk assessments and event management plans. We'll determine actions for the promotion of the license and objectives. And in line with the section 182 guidance would ask that each application would be assessed on its individual merits, um, which, which is what I'm asking the committee to do. I'll ask Mr. Taylor to add um, some information for the, for the committee. Um, well, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anyone's got. Um, I think, I mean, this journey's begun, uh, we've owned that farm for generations and, uh, and we've built a business up from there and, and off the back of that, that place, I mean, we, there was 110 employees worked there um, when, we, when the factory was there. And, and I built my other businesses off there and I now employ like 600 people. So we, we, we know how to run a good business. And all of the points that, that, that these, these guys have got, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've got the same issues. I don't want drugs and crime or nothing like that because um, my family's live there. Even my family's in the room here. And, and, and I, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to be doing anything um, which is going to cause any problems because um, I love everything um, in, in, in Pymore. Um, and I mean, the, the roads, I disagree, the roads are perfectly suitable. They're B roads. Um, and the footpaths is, you know, there's footpaths everywhere in the Fen. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's it's you know it's it's, bit, it's an agricultural place. There's millions of tons a year, or thousands and thousands of tons a year of produce come out there, and hundreds and hundreds of lorries. Farming's changed. Everyone's trying to diversify and do different things. There's a lack of stuff going on in this local area, um, and this is just something which could be um, something add to our area to give people something to do. It's it's not far from anywhere. Um, I mean, we've talked about local hospitals to being too far away, but I mean, it's ridiculous because we live there. We're 30 miles away from a local hospital. So it's, there's, there's a lot of things which are, um, you know, people, you know, I know they're concerned, but ultimately we're not planning to do this every day of the week. We need flexibility with this license because flexibility is the key to making a business work these days. Um, you can't just be rigid because these. If you want someone to come and act there, you have to fit around them. So we just want to be able to have things done, and we'll plan a year ahead with different whatever we're going to do. And you know, ultimately, um, we want to give something back to the community and charities because that's ultimately how this journey began um, through the Ukraine charity that we set up. And we've raised three million pounds worth of aid for Ukraine, and and basically the plan is to put that, carry that on, giving the money to charity, and and you know it's is a lot of local people put a lot of effort in, and you know that's sort of where the brain troll come from, really, um, and uh, you know we don't want noise or or upset. There's technology out there to stop noise if you did something outside, but we've got. A, Massively insulated, lovely building there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say, really. OK, thank you, Mr Taylor. I'm sure that you'll have a chance to talk in a minute because 
Um, members, do you have any questions at this stage? Of... Can we do questions now? Or do we... Yeah, no, we do have questions now. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. You want to kick off, Jeff? If you want to start, Alex. Yeah, go on. You're ready, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, we appreciate uh, the ideal of being flexible. Um, obviously, that some tends to cause a main concern against the public, I think, in this particular thing. I mean, can you give us a, what you envisage the um, likely event schedule to look like? Would it be one a month, two a month, you know, I, obviously it's quite a wide ranging variance, um, you know, you put wedding parties in and things like that. And so are we looking at every weekend, are the, you know, um, and, you know, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and then dotted ones midweek, um, how? That is the question, but it's, yeah, that is why we want the flexibility, but ultimately the goal is just to get my factory rebuilt. Well, you're not going to want an event there every day, are you? It's, you know, that's the, we sit here, we've been, we're waiting 12 months for our plan and permission for a factory to get up and running. And, and, and we've got, you know, this, this thing, I mean, we had Princess Anne come and thousands of people come and we've had the biggest packet Chris in the world. We get, the place copes with it, it's no problem. And, uh, but you just need that flexibility. Um, we, we, we're not gonna have raves and stuff like that, it's not, it's, it's, we just want nice family events. Um, and if we got Tom Jones or someone come or someone famous, it'd be lovely for the area because the, the, this, there's nowhere around Cambridgeshire with a building big enough to hold as many people as that building will hold. And that building will hold like four or 5,000 people. And that's all indoors. Can, can, I, can I just add, Councillor Jones, the, I think the answer to that is we don't know at this moment in no. time. It's 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 a very very it, it's in its infancy. We're, we're looking at other um, venues that are similar. Um, we're often it's, it's, it's brainstorming at the moment, so that's that's mm. kind of where where we are at this moment in time. But we're trying to give you an example of what may come, say like the ice skating at Christmas, the the Santa's Grotto, that sort of thing. Um, it's not just going to be you know, like a, a Tom Jones concert every no. week. To do a Tom Jones concert, it takes a year to plan. So that's where, you know, just trying to be kind of give you some examples of, of what, what it's about. Can I just follow up? Because um, you've given me a little bit of, you said you're looking to be rebuilt the factory and that's what I didn't quite understand. It. I know the noise impact assessment that you've given specifically we talked about plant equipment and I was going to say how does that relevant to the um so you are looking to rebuild a factory I, I, are you looking but you're also looking to the inside events and I can't see they necessarily marry up are we looking at a separate building to host the events or are we but sometimes we don't use the buildings because the seasonal produce it's all it's all a bit open at the minute and we haven't even got a plan through yet have we so you know we're yeah I, th I think what, what yeah. the council's asking is it a separate Set the building to the to the Chris factory. Um, well, they'll be in the same site. Yeah, but it was a separate building, but yeah. on the same site. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. I've got a number of questions. Um, looking through your documentation, because obviously we have to base our decision yeah. on those those four uh, licensing objectives yeah. and take into consideration everybody's feelings. So, you know, I can appreciate that you're saying you're not really sure yet on some of the things, but obviously that doesn't help us make our decisions. So, you know, like I said, I've got quite a number of questions, which hopefully you'll be able to answer some of the things sort of we've touched on already. Um, one of the things that the first things I looked at was the fact that there's no real design and layout for the event management business that you're talking about. So um, I know you're saying that since the pandemic, you know, there's a lot more requirement for outdoor yeah. activities, which you say in one document, then in another one, you say there's going to be most of them inside. So that's what confused me a bit. But then um, for me, it's, you know, you're saying you've got adequate car parking, obviously lots of people are concerned about parking, where people are going to put their cars, or whatever. So how do you know you've got adequate car parking if you don't actually know the size of your events and your layout 
do you, do you see where I'm coming from? Because I don't, it, you know, I know well, you've got lots of space there. There's 10 acres of hard stand, and so there's a, you <clears throat> but know. But if you're having one of the applications, sorry. Go so go one, one of the, um, the, the six events a year that you're asking yeah. for are 24 hour events. You know, I'm assuming you have your business plan, you, you, you know, the financial model and all those things, um, you know, that, that you need to make this work to make it viable. You know, the application does state it is very wide reaching. It does stay up to 4,999 people. So although, although you're saying, you know, oh, we won't have a lot of events like that that's what you're actually applying for so you know from our perspective we just sort of need to know well if you had potentially five thousand people on there and yeah. you you got your license for that how do you know you can if you haven't got design plan of the state how do you know you're going to be able to accommodate those that's people? where the <clears throat> that's where the um events event safety management plan comes in that talks about the traffic management of things that talks about the employment of um, SIE registered door supervisors and traffic traffic monitoring people that talks about all of the necessary information that would need to be put into a plan to be submitted. I mean, when we're talking about this, this extended hours, it's because when we're speaking to people about booking someone, say, for instance, we'll use Tom Jones, mm. because that's something that may be appropriate for this area. What, what they're saying is, if they're on, you know, if they're coming on, on a tour, you've got to be flexible with the hours. So it may be that they might be in London on the afternoon, but then they can come up here for 10 o'clock at night, but that runs later. Mm. So that's where it's not a case of we're wanting to do something that's going to be running all night because, you know, that's that's just, it's just what we're fancy doing. It's, yeah. it's accommodating the artists that would come. And the parking side of it, everything would be submitted prior well a long long time before anything like that was agreed so that would know that there is a facility at, at the site now yeah. for i think did you say 500 pop parking spaces there's more than that is there how yeah. many do you see obviously you get a thousand in there without even thinking about it a thousand currently yeah. that's without putting anything in plan it, like anything so any anything further in space. motion that's what's there now All so right. that's what we'll be working with as a minimum All right okay okay come back in uh, um just to clarify i mean part of our um problem for want of a better word as the committee is obviously you've submitted an application for monday to sunday 10 till 2. um and i know you're saying that each of the individual events you you but obviously we, we, we've got to adjudicate on that or on what you've submitted um and, and, and if we get you know if we sort of allowed that if, if we sort of and obviously that that will be decided later by us um then that that's what you've got um so, so i think that that's one of our issues in terms of maybe if you'd submitted some of the paperwork earlier then we, we we maybe have had a chance to consider some of that but anyway sorry go on joe you want to sorry i've got some more this is quite i went through this in quite a lot of detail um so if you you've modified your opening hours um i guess you've based that on the fact that there were complaints is that is that what you've you, what, what reason have you modified those because we had the first set of opening hours and the 12 events a year that you wanted to do but you've now range those back a little bit what reason what reason did you do that for? partly because of the the storm that came with it and mm -hmm. and partly because um spoke to the, the promoters spoke to um you know said that we needed something more specific rather than mm -hmm. it being open as it was mm -hmm. and wanting to accommodate and 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 reassure people that it wasn't and it wasn't going to be what was anticipated because obviously all of these objections came in with all of this, you know, the fear of drugs and dr drinking and, and, and everything that, you know, criminal damage and everything that came with it. Oh, That's, yeah. you know, that wasn't the intention at all. Um, mm. So we'll, we'll pull them back because that, that, you know, that will suit the venue, those hours that have... You know, and that doesn't hold. then affect your final back business plan. That sort of works yes. within your plan. Yes. So if you're looking to... So just trying to get my head around. If something now finishes at two o'clock, is that the time you're looking to finish? What what's your wind down and close close down period? Well, because that, obviously, if, if you've got a lot of people in there, it's the impact of them coming out after that 
Is yes, it? yeah. I mean, say the the closing hours would be half an hour after, so it would be two thirty. If if that's that's what's on the application. Yeah, thing. that that's when it closes. But yeah. sort of like a wind up period, you're going to have people. If you've got five hundred cars in there, you're going to have quite a period of time, and, and you have put um, that you would put one person on on for dispersal, which you know obviously that would be in your individual. Um, event management plan because obviously one person is not enough if you've got a big event but um, you know you're going to have several hours potentially of people coming out how what pit, how long have you anticipated have you done any calculations on that or how long well, well, that no, take? to be honest no because obviously the license is is it only at the application stage so we would accommodate that within the any any plan for any big event right. that would be accommodated um, as to a wind down period or you know what is specific to that particular event. As for say if it was a, a, a wedding um, inside, mm -hmm. um, I mean that could be wound down from an hour before. Yeah. yeah. So the inside, you know, the, anticipate that the, as time goes on, looking to facilitate things like weddings. Mm -hmm. Um, you know other events as well that would be there would be something in there where the staff training and everything would incorporate mm. exactly that oh, okay. but that again would depend on numbers because you might you know you might have something where there's a capacity of you might only have 200 people there mm. for an event mm. and they might want to finish at 12. Okay okay and when you when you say um, you know you'd have somebody sort of keeping looking at dispersal for you know, more of a music event, yeah. thinking. Um, and you're talking about vicinity. What do you classify as vicinity? Because obviously where your, your building is, you know, yes, it's fairly on its own, but not far either way. You've got some fairly major residential areas and those cars will be going through those, or cars or, or people walking or cycling. You know, if it is some sort of music and festival of an event, you know, you always have to consider, you know, people walking and they may, get there but how do they get away from there when it's dark and they're walking and that safety aspect but they will then be walking through or traveling through uh transiting through those residential areas what do you class as vicinity because if is it just sort of either side of your venue or are you looking into the no no it's, it's a wide it's a wide aspect like i said when i was talking before there's not the intention to cause any any disruption, anything that's going to cause problems going forward. It's, it's a plan that is a long-term plan. And it's a plan that is, is a positive plan for the area. It's not, you know, it's not, oh, well, we'll have this and we'll throw everybody out. Mm -hmm. It's a case of that will be, it will be planned. Everything will be planned and, you know, it'll be monitored so that if there is problems, there'll be things put in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it's about, it's probably about a little bit of trial and error as well, but I mean, obviously promoting the four licensing objectives is the major thing from, from the first instance. So, you know, we do know what the responsibilities are. Mr. Taylor is very aware of that. Get this personal license, will be in charge of any events. He will be the person that is there and will be responsible for that license at all times and anything that beyond. So that, that it's a little bit kind of, a little bit of a guessing game at this moment in time. Mm, okay, all right, thank you. Do you want any more out to this um, No, go on, you go first. No, I can... um, thank you. Uh, just pulling back, so you, you said you have a thousand car parking spaces. Um, and again, it's, it's, I know, you may have a business plan that you may not want to give to us or you know just i can see it's commercially sensitive to some respect in what information you are giving us um i mean obviously if the factories it's really trying to determine is this a part-time business running alongside the factory if you get that up and running or when you get that up and running um to supplement income is it going to be a business on its own and therefore take on a life of its own um, with, like with a thousand car parking spaces, if you've got 600 people working at the factory, what does that? No, right, sorry. No, there's not 600 people work there. Um, that's across my state, all over the country now. So if the factory's working, would there still be a thousand spaces? What, what proportion would there be left at the end of the things? And 
well, the, 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 if we was doing an event, it'd be in the evening and it'd all be gone home anyway. So it's, your factory is down to five, is it, type well, of situation? Well, there'll be the odd people work overnight, I would think. Um, but the, the intention for it is a long term. It's, it's not just because of what's happened with the, the crisp factory. It's, it's a vision that, that Mr. Taylor's had and it's a vision that's coming into fruition now, depending on obviously how far we can take it because it, it, is, it does depend on having a, a premises license. That is one of the big, you know, the, the big deciders really. But it's not just a short term thing. It's a long term. Okay, great. I, I can see, you know, we can see that it, you know, where you're going with the plan to some degree. Um, and again, it's it's really trying to tie it down into what you envisage in, in terms of how it will affect the population. Uh, you know, I have some similar concerns about sort of traffic going through the building and there is uh, through the villages and essentially you will be getting those. Um, Let me formulate this a bit better, if I may. I'll perhaps pass it on. Yeah, awesome. I can come back in. I'll, I, um, there is, if you're going to do an open air event, there is a public footpath that runs through the um, plan that's on on the application. I just wondered what your thoughts are in terms of dealing with with that right of way issue. Um, well, no one's ever used it until um, now. <laughs> to be fair, so that's, that's that's only just been brought up because of this, um, and and that's the roadway um, down to my sugar beet pad. So it's always been our farm track across our farm anyway, um, and and to be fair, it's actually be quite handy to open it up because that is a footpath right in the middle of Little Downham. It's just not ever been um, ever been. Uh, they're now going to spend some money on it and put a bridge over, and that'll be real good because no one will even need to walk near the road to walk a little down. And so um, that's give us another access into the site. So um, I can't really see where that sort of effect that only in enhances it, really. Um, but, you, but you will have an issue, or you could have an issue, that obviously if you've got an event, say, I know you mentioned on your application that up to 5,000 people, um, and you've got then you've got members of the public who wish to walk along that right of way. Then I don't see how that's going to stop them. If I'm honest, it's not really. Okay. Um, it's not even near it. That's the other side. It's right on the boundary. Um, and I, you know, if we've got to put a Harris fence up or something, um, you know. But it's, it's also my track to my farm and other farmers as well. And also now it'll be a lovely track to Little Downham. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll come back with one more. Then I'll. I'll um, is the overhead cable? You, there's some overhead cables running across the site. I just wonder what no, issues. No, they um they got buried. I had them put underground um, last year. Okay. Right. Oh yes. Oh, did you, you've got yours on? Um, yeah, the, you, you've the just reference the noise and sound assessments you've sent the Chris factory. I know you do do some work at night, but it's not really going to be the same. You know, it's going to be quite a lot different. Have you done? You know, obviously you haven't done noise and uh, impact, uh, noise and lighting impact assessments for not not yes. at this stage. But have you done any research at all on what impact there will be on the two? closest villages have you, have you looked at that at all have no, you what, what i've suggested is that we can we can get a, a consultant in to actually do that um and i think i've put that in a, i don't know whether it's in the, the management plan or whether it's in the conditions but to work with a professional on that kind of level and you know mr Till is willing to do anything that he has to do like that that sort of brings me on to my next point which is in your operating schedule it's quite as you you said yourself it's quite loose and it's quite wide ranging and it doesn't give us a lot of detail so you know without knowing exactly what events you're going to run and the timings for them because there will be standard events that you could put timings on um, without without doing that how can you actually evaluate the impact really um because you're not going to know you know what i mean you've put a series of events in which could run from 10 till to the next morning and then some that could run almost 24 hours 
but it's really difficult to to assess what what, what impact there's going to be without you including that. and that was quite vital detail that would have been really useful the 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 tent or two um is envisaged to be for events that would be like i say like wedding events or, or such in inside that you know the impact of the noise there would be no noise impact of, on anywhere for that because that would be inside the building which would be appropriately insulated for so there was no impact at all the other that would put down to six up to six up to six up till four o'clock in the morning they're the ones that would be a year in the planning. They're the ones that would have everything. I mean, I go back to Tom Jones because that's the type of thing that we've discussed. They're the ones that would be, um, everything would be done months and months in advance. I mean, you've got to, you've got to advertise tickets months and months in advance. So in order to get to this ticket stage, everything like that would have to be done. So, you know, that would be something that would be accepted would be the norm for any outside large event, festival, whatever it was going to be. That would be accepted that that would be, you know, that would have to be submitted in line with the actual plan for the event. So if you were looking at a festival, for instance, which often run over two days, not, not one, are you looking at some of these longer term events running over two days rather than because obviously you you've seen you know you've applied for six days are you looking at any of those running no not not currently i've applied for up to six days could yeah. be just one but I've no but i'm just for, saying are you are you not not, any not of those being two together? not currently well, there's, there's no plan for that currently Right, okay. And with regards to the fact that there's no specific timings for some of these events, uh, if you look at the, um, you know, um, licensing objective for protection of children, um, it's very difficult to determine whether children, it, that they, they're going to be um, appropriate for children because that detail's not in there. What have I got thoughts all in the management plan that obviously it will be submitted. Is that that management plan you've got, is that an overarching management plan? This, this is the one that that I've given you the, the just the headings for, and then I've got the we've got the content and there. But as I say, I didn't want to publish that. So, but it is it's definitely all it's all determined in there. Everything about children and you know losing kids and having stations for lockdowns and stuff. Everything's in there. Thank you, Joe. Alec, can you come? Thank you, Joe. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, as the information comes out a little bit. I mean. And obviously the disparity between how you see it working and how we imagine it. I mean, obviously you, you're talking about having um, sort of wedding potentially in the building. And again, I was still thinking of sort of a warehouse type building. I take it's going to be something slightly different or is it, are you um, in order to host, host the events? Well, we spoke about it last night and obviously the infrastructure isn't there currently because obviously it's just a, a shell of a building at this current time. But that's, that would be, if the licence is granted, it would be a case of putting an infrastructure in that could accommodate a number of different eventualities, events, whatever, internally. So you could, you could even have a stage inside with Tom Jones inside. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, that, it's the infrastructure that will be put into place, which will accommodate all of those different events. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I mean, obviously, initially, and I did a bit of a site visit, if you know what I mean, in the same way. Um, I would assume you're going to be putting up marquees and things like that. Um, and obviously wouldn't have the sound insulation that you were looking at initially. Um, so obviously, as we tease this information and see your vision, um, but again, it's how it's going to happen in the short term. Um, can, I, can I just add, Councillor, that um, I've spoken to um, a guy that um, Mr Taylor would use who would bring in, and he keeps mentioning Tom Jones, so I do apologise, but that's the, the calibre of the event that he keeps mentioning. Um, and, and, and what he's saying is that it, it would be a massive time scale. It, it has to be, you know, 10 to 12 months planning for that. So, you know, it would be, it would be something that it wouldn't just pop up next week. And obviously the, the, the finances of it as well all have to be, Right. Okay. If I just stop you there, I, I obviously, I mean, Tom Jones, great name. I love him. All right. That's, uh, but um, that's, that's, I suppose our real difficulty is with the lack of detail, it's the number of events that are going to happen. 
okay and obviously you're keeping that open and i can appreciate that um and obviously we can only consider the plan that with the what the application that we've got here um where if you were tiny it down to say 24 events a year you expect to have you know half a dozen weddings in the summer perhaps a few less in the winter and things like that then we would have more of an idea but it's, it's 24 hours a day seven days a week and obviously you're talking about tom jones and you know, we appreciate they are the one-off events same as new market nights or things like that um where they have the bigger events um it's just trying to see if we can tie you down a little bit more on what the reality is going to be rather than um uh, an airy fairy yeah, no, <laughs> to, yeah, for one yeah. of a better words uh, yeah you... absolutely but i mean even if you're talking about something like having um, a winter wonderland there an internal winter wonderland which has got a santa's grotto and, and everything that goes with it you've got the opportunity then to have mulled wine and stuff on do you know what i mean so the license isn't just about massive events it's about having that flexibility to offer families the community to come in and and go into you know, having that addition there to say, oh, we don't, we don't need to have a temp event notice. That only covers 499 people. There might be 600 people there. So it's that flexibility of, of having the license, which will not be used until two o'clock every day of the week. That's not, that's not the case at all. We'll come back with one. Um... I think um, Councillor Webber touched on noise pollution, obviously, or potential noise, noise sound. Um, obviously, it's in a very rural area. What about light emission in terms of lights? If it's an outdoor event, um, what, what thoughts have you given to, to sort of... Well, the, the, uh, the, light, the light pollution um, report was submitted, which was obviously pertained to the planning permission for the factory. Um, that was just by way of saying that we've had that done for that we're obviously more than willing to get that uh, another report done for any individual event that will be held up there um it's just to be honest we were waiting to see if we could get the license before we went forward with those sort of reports yeah but we'll just come back in that obviously lighting from a from a factory a chris factory for want of a better word is going to be different from a Top t at a Tom Jones event. Let's use, let's use that, and that's where I'm trying to get to. It is what 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 thoughts have you had on the, the the two differences? I know there's some there is some submissions in the paper, but I'm just really trying to tease out um, what your thoughts are. Sorry, Chair. I'm just looking because I, I I think I put something on the additional conditions that were submitted about. Um, Oh no no no! It's not. It's in the uh, the working plan. There is there's there is things about strobe lighting and prevention of public nuisance. Um, saying that, yeah, we'll we'll require ten days prior notice to the license authority for lasers, strobe lighting. Um, what are you talking about? The just the general lighting itself. Yeah. The, the general, you, you, you've got an event for with 5,000 people there, it's outdoors. What thoughts are, have you got in terms of the, the lighting impact upon the... Um, it's already there. Yeah. <clears throat> it's lit up now. Okay. It's still lit up like it hasn't been forever. Okay. It's been like that for 30 years. So, just get, so you don't think it'll be any different? No. The, no. The, you know, to help the safety for our staff, we have to have a certain level of the lighting. Okay, thank you. Do you, you want to come in, Joe? Yeah, only a couple more things. Just um, security of the site. How are you going to? Uh, I'm assuming you're. Is it fenced now? I wasn't. You know, is it? Yeah. So, I'm just thinking if you've got people who come to a very large outdoor festival type event, they don't know the area, um, they they go wandering off, they trespass passing on other people's land. It's a health and safety issue as much as there's dikes. We all know the lay of the land around here because I've lived here all my life like you have. So, you know, it's, it's a risk, isn't it? They're all risks and it's how you're going to mitigate that risk and, um, you know, um, 
really make it make sure that they don't yeah well we'd, we'd do everything with you know i've got more house fencing than than, than speedy hire mm -hmm. so we could soon do that do Just whatever we can from... do um ultimately we don't want anyone falling in a dike <laughs> but they can fall in one off the side of a footpath couldn't they yeah yeah so, they can but yeah. if you're at an, uh, uh, an organized event with music possibly alcohol yeah. you know it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's there is a there is a risk to life yeah, no, so it's, it's just something that, that yeah. there's something that's got to be considered um and uh I've got things but i think the only other thing really was to say that you know obviously we can only view as alan and alec have both said we can only you know consider the license you've applied for which is seven days a week and i know you're saying we're not going to do that but you could <laughs> once you've got your license you can and you have that 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 available to you so and that's the yeah you know, that's what we're trying to ask absolutely. you absolutely questions because we need need that information we'll understand that we'll understand that that's you know that's where you sit also, we all know there's a process called a review process if, if a license were granted and the licensing objectives were not upheld. So, you know, that's the way that the, it could quickly be taken away if it wasn't adhered to. And that's what that's the point I'm trying to make. OK, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, after the, some of the problems is uh, we're finding here because of the sort of lack of information coming through. Um, and one of the bits that were called out was that you hadn't consulted the statute, statute uh, consultees. Um, is there any reason for that, that you didn't do any pre-work before coming to the committee? Well, because there's been a few applications submitted that um, on, on the same basis and, and the, the business plan was very loose at that time. So basically our intention was to get the premises license um, and then obviously work with the authorities prior to any event taking place. You know, like it may have been the car before the horse when I think about it, but it's, I mean, it, there's an awful lot of work goes into all of the planning and all the risk assessments and everything like that, which if you're not getting, if it's specific for an event and you're not getting the license for that event, that's a whole lot of work that didn't need to be done. I mean, I appreciate going into specifics may be um, difficult, but I'm sure um, they would give some general advice on what we needed. Um, uh, well, I mean, I, I submitted the application and spoke to the licensing officer, and then there were some amendments made, and then it was accepted as a duly made application, which would have been refused had it not been duly made and promoting the four licensing objectives. It is a, it was a very wide application at the time, but I, I hopefully I've explained why it was such a wide application. Okay. Um, it was a business in its infancy. I couldn't directly say positively that this, this, and this was happening because we didn't know at that stage how far the events were going. I mean, I think obviously the, to allay the fears about big festivals and things, We've taken off the fact that we applied initially for up to 12 events a year. Now it's gone down to up to six events. And as I said before, it could only it could just be one event because that's the one that's, you know, that's the one that's going to take a year to plan. The other side of it is more of a community thing where often things like I'm going back to Winter Wonderland, ice skating outside. That sort of thing, you know, where it's going to be a venue that you can go to and enjoy that venue for, you know, you might have, you might have a play for the kids to go to, or, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's not here that we're looking to implement. And along with that, obviously, there is the chance to do a festival or... I can appreciate yeah. that. I, I, I'm sorry without you, just cutting you short. Um, and I can see, I've seen the Winter Wonderlands and people do travel up to Thetford and Norfolk and things like that to go and see these events and obviously bring somebody who I can appreciate would be a, um, you know, a worthy cause and if we can get investment in the community, um, be pleased to. I mean, um, going back to your Tom Jones event, I mean, how do you envisage people actually getting there? I mean, uh, you're going to have more than a thousand cars needed in terms of that if you expect people to use public transport. It is an out of the way situation. Just wondering where you were going initially with it and how you 
envisaged it to, you know to pick the location and say okay here but you're going to need that sort of infrastructure going in and yeah what were your initial well, thoughts understand that and, and that's where you work with the people who have done this time and time and time again we've been in contact with the promoter we've been working with them as to how that would be detailed and obviously they, they're professional in their field we'll take full advice from them we'll make sure that everything's in place and we'll make sure that it's all documented and submitted to the relevant authorities within probably a, a, a time scale that you would say if you wanted six months or eight months or whatever i can appreciate you're going to say oh we will look and see how it's done but to have the initial idea to believe it can be done um you'd have to have did the promoters sit and say well we run a for the reading festival or such and such um to base this on to be that far out i mean obviously if you start going to other festivals you or things like that you know they're in a, a major city they've got the transport in there um and they've got a bus service that runs out obviously this area doesn't have that infrastructure being so rural um i mean if you look at like new market races <clears throat> new market nights we go there you get a minibus eight of you get in a minibus and you go there and that will be you know and that's 30 miles away people go there from all over the country so and and normally people travel in groups so that's how it will work it's no different to being in new market really is it because new market hasn't there isn't a bus to new market from ely and if you was going there you there wouldn't definitely be one at the right time it's just people get to events, don't they? They find their way of getting there in groups and they normally book them together and, and do stuff like that. Okay, mate. I, I think, again, taking new market, uh, I mean, it's not that far out of town, it's walking distance. We've got four and a half miles probably out of Ely or something like that, I'm not quite sure of the distance, but it's it's some considerable distance. It's not just a, a yeah. you know, half hour walk from one of the village, you know, or from town centre out. Um, I suppose that's my concern. How 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 are they going to do it safely if they are walking? It's not a road. Uh, I said it's a drive one. I'm not sure if there is any pavement there at all. For there may be some, as you say, backtracks now that take us yeah. a little down them. But um, it does seem to be quite a, a safety issue potentially. Um, if last number of people are walking there. I mean, are, are you also expecting camping on site and things like that for festivals type um, of situations? Or? That's a good question. Uh, we've not got that far yet. Um, you know, and that'd be nice. You know, it, obviously, if there's people want to come from the village, that you'd put a minibus on, wouldn't you? If that was that popular, it wouldn't be a problem at all. And and I'm sure most of the village would want to come to it. There's a few that wouldn't, obviously, but the you know, I'm sure that that that, that we'd find a way. There's never I've never not found a solution to a problem. You know, it's a very, you know, there's a lot of taxi firms around here desperate for work at the moment because um, they're, they're on the knees. This, this will help. This will help. So there's taxis, buses, there's loads of options. If I can come back on that, and I might need some help from licensing or um, legal, is you, you mentioned in the response in an answer to to Alec Jones, um, that it would be the, in terms of traffic, it would be the responsibility of the. And I'm trying to make sure I understood this correctly. Of the promoter to to come up with that traffic plan. Whereas I, you're obviously applying for the license, so you'll be the license holder. So I would have thought that was your responsibility. Am I reading that right? Um, no, chair. What I meant was obviously we will work with the promoter. So the license is entirely the responsibility of the license holder, but obviously they they will employ somebody who has that experience under the remit of their, you know, their um, they will authorize everything. So it's not cascading it down to anybody else. The responsibility will stay there, but it's just using people in the field who are experts at that. I, I can understand you, you know, bringing in expertise to deal with various issues but the bottom line is you, you're the license holder for my so, so that would be down to the absolutely uh, applicant i'm looking at lynn really for advice to make sure i'm understanding the law on that correct the um 
there was mention a while ago that um, that that the application was submitted, um, and and they spoke to the licensing officer, which was Lee Stewart. Um, the fact is, is that the validation of the uh, of the application does not mean to say that it upholds the licensing objectives. And it, 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 it is, you did ask the question of have they been to the, you know, the various consultees such as the police, etc. And we would, uh, it, it would have been, um, the, the section one, I'm trying to word it rightly, the section 182 guidance, guidance suggests that um, there would be applications that would probably benefit from the fact that they would, you know, they would take um, some guidance from the um, from the responsible authorities before the application was submitted, which obviously wasn't done. And I just wanted to make that clear that the application was validated, that licensing didn't say that that, that, that the uh, it would uphold the, um, yeah, no, the objectives. That, that's but what... The fact that you're um, from traffic management, it would be really um, a matter of of them agreeing or um, putting forward these plans so that they would not get objections from the responsible authorities who deal with those areas. Licensing, licensing per se itself does not, we, we can't insist that people submit an event management plan and all the rest of it. As long as the application is valid, we can't, it, you know, make sure that, that everything's upheld. That's what the well, that's why it goes out to consultation, and that's why um, uh, Karen, and that's yeah. why the, yeah. uh, the so, so I understand that. Uh, what what I was just trying to clarify is that it's the person, it's the licensed, um, the applicant who is the licensee. So if they if they've got a promoter that you know take the Tom Jones thing again, um, who comes along and promotes that, that they. The response, although they'll discuss that with the promoter and with the um, expertise that they've got, but it's still ultimately the licensee's responsibility the premises to, license for, for that for that traffic. I'm th just purely thinking the traffic management here right. for that traffic management. They can't actually push the responsibility on somebody no. else. The the, no. the, 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 the premises license holder, which would be the person who obviously um, issued the license, would have a responsibility. To ensure that all the conditions and the license and and the uh, activities and the timings and, and everything are in place, of course. Um, but obviously, if they put that out to someone else and someone else does it, ultimately there is a responsibility if those people that, that they employ to do it don't do it correctly. Yeah, chair, we, we accept uh, that. Hopefully, you understand why I was going down that route. Yeah, I just, accept that yeah. the responsibility would be the, would be Mr. Taylor's entirely. But obviously, the employment of experts in upholding that license and the objectives would be part of the bigger plans. Hey, and it's really a bit of a question to Lynn. I mean, would it be prohibitively, prohibitively expensive to? Uh, I, I don't know the level of detail needed within the plans, but I mean, if you are talking, say, five thousand people, is it enough to just to say that we would have a, uh, you know, a full group on the, you know? 10 people inside managing traffic, three people on the road, two people down at a... Uh... Does that make sense? The, yes, the management plans and noise levels, um, lighting are, are the remit of my colleagues, which are, are environmental services and the police um, and other environmental services such as food and safety, et cetera. It, it's not the not remit the of, of, the licensing, of, the, of licensing. Licensing validates applications and then it, 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 it sort of um, enables um, the application to be properly heard under the Licensing Act. That's with all due respect why we're here now and why we have a um, number of people that have objected yeah. to, to the just application. Just trying to get guidance on whether it's the expense of uh, and whether it's practical but i can appreciate that's not your remit so thank you any more, any more questions joe um no no you really just to, co to comment i think that you know you
the traffic management plan is one of the key documents with this type of application uh, because of the types of events and the wide ranging license you've applied for and actually detailing your <coughs> excuse me operating schedule so I think you know that's that's where we are struggling your traffic management plan could have covered you know it covers volumes flows you know all, all the things and the impact on the, the area. So I think that would have been a really good document to have submitted with your application. And for me, the, the, the operating schedule hasn't got quite enough detail in it, but you have, you have given us quite a lot of detail while you've been here. So that's been useful, thank you. Okay, thank you members. I think we're now, I, I can open it up to whether any of the statutory consultees wish to ask any questions, um, looking at, Police or, or Karen, whether they wish to ask any questions of the applicant. Um, no specific questions, but obviously we wanted an opportunity to respond to the additional information. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to come on in terms of for you to present what you want to say. So this is purely questions of the applicant at this stage. Any? Yeah. Yeah, just one question. Have you been to any safety advisory groups to get free advice that would obviously help with these traffic managements and things before the application? Personally, yes, I've, I've attended them. Attend, I used to work in, as a licensing officer for a number of years. And are you talking about for, this? for this application? No. So, any, no, no other questions of the applicant at this stage? Okay. Well, thank you. It's been a long time, I know, but obviously, yeah, yeah, we we have a we did have a lot of questions, and obviously, as you know, it's it's created a lot of public interest. So, we wanted to make sure. To get, yeah, from, from both sides to make to, to ask those questions and yeah, you've got one question, Sorry. Lynn. Sorry. Uh, it was it was really a, a clarification. Um, it is the responsibility of the applicant for each event to satisfy the responsible authorities, of which you know we have representative, representatives here, and the licensing authority, um, and in the um, in the conditions. That they've put in, in in or proposed it would be the the applicant's responsibility for each event to ensure that every single thing such as traffic management parking lighting everything uh, is is to the the the, the requirements um, to stage that event so it wouldn't just be a, a one-off blanket it would be every single event they'd have to be satisfied and that would be the safety advisory group Sorry, I just wanted well, no, to clarify that. that. Useful clarification. Yes, Maggie, you can ask a question. Of course you can. Um, just a follow-up question, really, because I, I, I probably missed your, or maybe didn't quite understand your answer to the question that was given by um, police colleagues. Um, I thought the question was, have you been to SAG to actually get advice in relation to this particular application? And I think you just said that you'd attended as a licensing officer. So you, you the answer was no, I haven't. You didn't, right? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maggie. So, if there's no more questions at at this stage. <laughs> there is. No, no, just one thing. I, I just really on on the safety aspects getting home. I mean, um, and obviously you said there obviously there's solutions, but um, I'm a, unsure of the area. I mean, I, I'm assuming there is no street lighting between. Um, your willow farm going out um, back. Um, so again, I just get in my head how you envisage it's already going to be using uh, taxis. And if you've got late night and alcohol being served, people getting home, um, safety bikes, right. Okay, thank you. I can't really see uh, people wanting to walk, walk home from any event, if I'm honest, because I've never walked home from an event. Um, so, yeah, so the street lights, uh, you know, we haven't even got street lights from um, Ely a little down them, have we? But people still walk down there and uh, we're in the fens, aren't we? And, you know, the other thing, the outdoor event stuff, I mean, we've, you're limited on your times of the year. As, as uh, winter time, you're not going to have a lot going on, you know, so you weren't going to do stuff. So I know it's all year, but it's not because you just wouldn't be able to do it. Thank you, um, everybody. So if I can now move on to the statutory consultees and I'll, I'll take it in the order there. If I go to Karen first, and there's the paper, the, the appendix five of the 
um, Pack has um, the comments from, from Karen. Do, do you want to expand on that or make any? Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, the application that was received on the 18th of May raised some concerns due to the lack of information being provided that will enable the domestic team within environmental health to be reassured that the promotion of the public nuisance objective had been properly considered and measures were able to be put in place that could achieve the same. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion, but there was no information provided as to the likely number or nature of events that could be held on the site. The application made no distinction between the anticipated number of large scale events with live or recorded music, which could attract many thousands of people compared to smaller local events with no music or other noise impacts. There was no indication as to whether such events would be internal or external. And therefore, I had to review the application in respect of the information available to me at that, that time. So the consideration given in the application for the potential means to control music noise levels from a larger scale event was considered inadequate, subjective measures and not appropriate for larger scale music events. The procedure and timescales proposed for requesting advice and guidance from the safety advisory group were considered prohibitive and the suggestion that each event would be taken to safety advisory group for agreement is considered impractical and unworkable. It's usually a requirement for larger scale events to be discussed through this forum, but details had not been provided in the application to identify the scale and likely number of these. Moving on to the additional information provided on the 12th, 13th and 14th of July, it's now suggesting that a building will also be used on site for internal events. But again, there is insufficient details provided to identify the structure or its construction with respect to noise mitigation for any event that may be held there. Also provided was a list of potentially different types of events. And although some of these are possibly unlikely to have any noise impact, whether held internally or externally, the information remains lacking in detail as to the potential number or proportion of large scale events which could have an impact compared to the smaller private or lower impact events. Even if an event provides no noise impact, depending on its size and number of attendees, there may be adverse impacts from higher traffic flows. And although the local authority has no enforcement powers with respect to noise levels on roads, overall road traffic impact is a consideration under the licensing objectives. The additional information provided by the applicant with respect to the lighting and noise impacts from the redevelopment of the factory site are considered irrelevant to this application. Noise guidance and standards applied to developments of an industrial nature are not comparable to the standards applied to music, entertainment or sporting events. The submitted noise report does, however, acknowledge the concern that I raised previously that there are very low existing background noise levels in the vicinity of the application site particularly during nighttime hours. Therefore, it's actually vital and key that adequate measures to control noise would be a requirement for any large scale music or entertainment activity on this site, especially during the early hours of the morning. Um, the additional information suggested a further limit to the timing of events to 0200 hours on any night and up to six occasions per year until 0400 hours. And my comments regarding low background noise levels and lack of clarity around the number and type of event being held at such times remain relevant, even with this proposed change. The additional information provided has identified that special effects such as dry ice, pyrotechnics, fireworks, lasers, explosions and strobe lighting will be arranged and stored so as to minimise any risk to the safety of those using the premises and 10 days notification provided to the licensing authority of their use. Such proposals are not considered a suitable control measure with respect to the public nuisance objective and raises further concerns. The additional information provided has suggested a condition to demonstrate that they will work with an acoustic expert and noise limiting devices will be installed and operated when entertainment takes place externally. I just have two points to make regarding this information. I am encouraged to see that they are talking about reference to a, an acoustic consultant but this would be an expectation and recommendation at Safety Advisory Group anyway for a, um, a large scale external event with amplified music as the focus. 
And my other point on that is noise limiting devices cannot be used externally and are therefore not considered a suitable sound control device for external music events. So therefore, although further information has been provided by the applicant, my original concerns remain. I require assurances that full consideration has been afforded to the controls that would be put in place to support the public nuisance objective considering the number and type of internal and external events to be held on such a site and appropriate conditions to support this. In addition, appropriate time periods must be provided to support safety advisory group in their requirement to review any future large scale event management plans. And that's, that's my updated comments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Karen, for that. Um, members, any questions? Yes, all right. Um, just for clarity's sake, you said noise limiting devices cannot be used externally. Are there any sound control measures for external? Do you know of? Yes, there's quite a lot you can do externally. Um, that usually involves a qualified noise consultant setting limits at mixer desks, knowing the distance to the nearest residential properties, knowing um, ground conditions, weather conditions, and being able to monitor and set the levels appropriate to that event but I've never heard of a noise limiting device, which is the ones you normally get in pubs and clubs, which is internal and it's a traffic light system. But I've never come across one that you could use externally. Another question. D does the applicant have any questions of, of the environmental health officer? Any questions from, oh, Lynn's gone. Oh, she's She's over there. Any questions, Lynn? No, Maggie? No. Do, do, do the police have any questions of environment? No. Thank you for that. In which case, we move on, on to you to, and it's on Appendix 5 of the pack, your submission. But if you want to say some words, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Though it isn't a requirement, um, it was unfortunate no, that no pre-application advice was sought um, from the responsible bodies prior to the application being submitted. Um, it would have been really useful to understand exactly what the applicant was looking at doing with the land and with the premises license that was being applied for. Um, instead, the submitted application includes such a wide ranging requirement for all regulated um, entertainment activities, late night refreshment and extensive alcohol supply times for up to 5,000 people. Um, but it lacked any detailed explanation of exactly what the events were seeking to host, and most importantly, the intended frequency of those events. Therefore, the lack of detail um, when considering this application, I had to work on the basis that the premises license was going to be used in full 365 days of the year um, to include all regulated entertainment activities, late night refreshments and supply of alcohol from um, the amended times now from 4 a.m. till 2 a.m. in the morning and then for uh, six occasions from 10 until four o'clock in the morning. Uh, please. I do have concerns over the proposed short time scales, um, which was 14 days for the submission of the finalised um, sorry, event management paperwork to the licensing authority, as it does not pro provide enough notification period. Depending on the frequent, uh, intended frequency of large events, um, the offered condition to submit paperwork to the licensing authority and subsequently to the um, safety advisory group um, may become unman unmanageable. Um, without being provided further details of the size and types of events, it would be difficult to propose a list of workable conditions. Um, the police do have outstanding concerns over potential public nuisance to locals caused by both the, pre the presence and noise of the uh, event traffic. Public nuisance from, um, from noise bleed from the actual events, event activities. Uh, itself to the neighbouring properties and to residents that are further afield in both Pymore and uh, down and villages. Traffic management issues caused by additional event traffic related um, uh, related traffic to both the uh, event site entrances, the um, particularly um, along the um, B1411 through Little Downham, which does appear to be the only main route um, onto the event site. 
um, as we've known that there is a um, lack of an event management plan that has been submitted with the application itself and that would have been really useful to have had that in advance um, rather than having the um, EMP that was submitted sub subsequently was really for a pop-up event cinema event in Norwich which wasn't really comparable um, to the high risk events that they may well be putting on such as um, the festivals at this site. Um, a site specific, specific, you know, I can't even talk now, specific EMP will be needed to provide uh, details for security um, requirements, staffing levels, presence of CCTV, uh, use of body worn cameras for certain staff, security fencing requirements, or safety considerations for remote rural locations, such as presence of waterfield ditches um, and there's no street lighting, um, etc. Um, there's no mention of um, a traffic management plan detailing um, location of emergency access routes, how attendees are expected to get to and from the site, or arrangements on on site parking. From previous knowledge, um, for large events without the provision of sufficient on-site parking. Some attendees are likely to park vehicles um, in locations en route to the event, causing obstruction to the highway, access issues, leading to conflict between them and local residents and other local users. It does not appear that the um, B1411 from Mitchell Downham has any street lighting or pavements, thus leading to safety concerns over pedestrians who may decide to walk to and from locations, especially during the hours of darkness. Without further in-depth um, details of exactly what the premises license is gonna be used for, including frequency and size and nature of events, it's not practical at this time to um, compile a set of suitable conditions to ensure the promotion of the licensing objectives. The absence of a traffic management plan is a concern. As previous knowledge, such a key, um, such a document is, is a key component to the success of any event, not only to um, attendees, but also more importantly to local community, thus ensuring minimal disruption is caused to them um, by the event traffic. And lastly, um, to ensure quick access and egress um, to and from the site um, for the emergency services vehicles. Um, due to the insufficient information provided in the application um, and the above outlined concerns, um, which I do, I believe, um, would be detrimental to the licensing objectives at this time, I would respectfully request the sub-licensing committee refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, members, any questions? No? Maggie, any questions? Lynn? Applicants, do, do you have any questions of the police at this stage? Okay. Well, thank, thank you for that. Um, we now move on to what we call the non-statutory uh, objectors. Um, I'm going to take... Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to take this in alphabetical order. Um, Councillor Bailey is first in alphabetical order, but then I'll, I will go slightly out of order and I'll take Councillor Dupre second. But um, if Councillor Bailey wishes to come up and... Thank you very much, Chair. Um, a huge amount of the content of my submission has been covered already in the discussion so far, so I will try and keep it as brief as possible. Um, I'm, I'm the district councillor for the Downham Villages, which includes the village of Pymore, where the application site is located, as well as Little Downham and Coveney, which all do have the possibility of being adversely affected by the application. I am aware of the strength of feeling of residents in the villages about this application, so um, I'm, I'm here to um, you know, amplify their voice. I have had um, quite a number of people contact me about, about this application. Uh, obviously, we are here today to be assured about how the application, applicant will meet the licensing objectives. And I think uh, that's really the main point I want to make. I don't think uh, local people will have been assured today uh, because we have such scant information about the actual nature of the events uh, that are, are planned to be run. Uh, and all one can do with an applicant of this uh, application of this nature um, 
as other people have said, you, when considering the licensing objectives, you're only able to do this by taking a view that the license could and may be used to its full extent. In other words, 365 days a year from 10 in the morning till two the next morning, even though that is not, we've heard the intention, that is the possibility when you grant this license, if you grant this license, that is open to the applicant to use it in that manner. So we have to treat this application on that basis that events may be running uh, in that way. That is the only, the only way that this can be viewed. So um, in terms of um, crime and disorder, um, obviously, you know, um, crime disorder levels in Palmer in the media area are currently incredibly low, in, very, very low indeed. Um, and the application seeks permission to run many different types of events in plays, films, sporting events, boxing, wrestling, live music, recorded music, dance performances, anything of a similar description. So it's a real catch all there. Um, and obviously, uh, when combined with an alcohol license, um, you know, I think it's an absolute inevitability that it, crime and disorder will increase. So the, the question is how to mitigate against that. And we have no information before us um, to be able to assess the suitability of, of um, any, any uh, management plan around that. So that causes a big problem. In terms of public safety, uh, there's the issue around um, pollution, both noise and light pollution. Um, the and uh, also pollution from, from vehicles. So, um, you know, the site has, does have very poor road links. There's no dedicated cycling or walking infrastructure. And I think the extensive nature of the application, which could see 4,999 people, 365 days a year, um, you know, the vast majority of people are going to need to access the site by car one way or another, whether that's in, in minibuses or, you know, other types of vehicles, but cars, taxis, et cetera. Uh, the B1411 um, is very ill-equipped to take that kind of traffic, meaning it, in the village of Little Downham in particular, uh, where um, the, the main street through Little Downham is, is a built-up area with um, residential properties fronting straight onto the, onto the road. Um, you know, I think there would be tailbacks and idling traffic. We don't know. We haven't heard of an event management plan, so we don't, we don't really know the answer to that. Um, and I think similar issues uh, could be caused... Uh, by people accessing off the A142 through Coveney and, and Wayhead, which again are even less equipped to take uh, such levels of traffic. Uh, in terms of public health, um, we haven't heard anything again in any event management plan about toilet and welfare um, and um, first aid type facilities. Uh, so that causes concern. Um, in terms of public nuisance, obviously there's, there's the traffic um, issue and no ac access or car parking arrangements given to us. We, we've heard um, the, the applicant talk about potential for car parking from between 500, the applicant himself thinks he has car parking facilities, maybe for a thousand cars. It's a huge concern to me that we don't actually know how much car parking is available on the site. And I would suggest that even a thousand car parking spaces could be uh, not, not enough for an event that can take up to 4,999 people. Uh, the vast majority of whom will need to access the site by car. Uh, and if you know the road in, from Little Downham into Pymore, it absolutely cannot take dispersed traffic parking all the way along, along the road. There's no double yellow line, so there's no, uh, I don't believe, parking restrictions. But if people start parking on that, on that road, it will be complete chaos. Um, but there's no plan in front of the committee, so it's, it's very difficult to assess that. And I'm very concerned about that amount of traffic uh, leaving the site in the early hours of the morning, two o'clock in the morning or up to 4.30 in the morning, depending on the, the, the type of event and whether it's one of the six per year. Uh, and the same issues through the 142 to, to Coveney and Wayhead uh, apply as well. And I think the nuisance, nuisance from that traffic uh, would be exacerbated by the frequency and size of events. And the license application before you is for up to 4,999 people, 365 days a year. That is the reality that we're facing. I understand that's not the intention, but that is the license that you would be granting. Uh, obviously the noise uh, that has been discussed, this, uh, the public nuisance in this quiet, uh, rural, flat country countryside location, I think has enormous potential. I used to deal with uh, a very considerable noise nuisance issue from um, a tire shredding factory, which is operating outside of its operating hours. Uh, at night and the issues that that caused for local residents 
quite far afield from where it was, um, was, was horrendous. Uh, you know, and you've got to look at the World Health Organization um, advice around uh, the very, very potential impact that, that noise pollution has. And that does hugely concern me. Uh, I think that, you know, the noise has the potential to carry uh, certainly into Pymore, but also into Little Downham and the droves um, and uh, beyond, frankly. Uh, and again, no information is provided in the application about management or control measures. Um, I think, um, again, around waste, similar issues apply, littering and, and waste uh, arising from events. There are others, you've, you've dis things that I would have to say, but you've discussed them already this morning, so I think you're live to them. Um, I really just want to say that, you know, given the lack of information in the application about what the applicant is actually trying to do, I just don't believe it's possible at this stage to address the concerns that I and others have um, by applying conditions, because I don't know what we would be applying conditions to because uh, we haven't got proper information about the events that are going to be run um, and, and how long they would be going on for. Um, I you know, just to say to the applicant, really, I think, I think the plan isn't ready to be submitted. And I think that's the issue. Um, I think you know, it would be better to apply for a license once the applicant knows what it is that they are trying to do. And then it would give people the opportunity to properly assess and properly understand the impact um, and, and people may well behind, be behind, you know, a one-off event to raise, raise income for Ukraine. I think local people would be pouring in with offers of help, but that is not what this license is. Uh, and I think that makes it very difficult. I, I, it's very difficult to apply for a license and then decide what to do. That, that's not the right way to go about things. Um, we are here to be assured how the applicant will meet the licensing objectives. And I'm afraid when the applicant doesn't know what they want to do, it's impossible to be assured. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Um, members, any questions? Councillor Bailey. Uh, any other, any questions? Uh, the, the applicants, do you have any questions of Councillor Bailey? Um, no, not really. I mean, this is the you, first you, time... You will, you will have a chance to sum up later on oh, in terms of your thoughts on, on what's coming up. So, you know, if it, but I'm looking at specific Well, I think questions. we've missed yeah. out the other access from Welney, which is the main road to his beach, to get in. We just mentioned Little Downham and Coveney, but there is actually a um, the main road off... That is the main road to his beach. So we don't want to miss that off there because that's that is that is there, Anna, is it? Yeah, that's absolutely another another way that you, people could could get to the site. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and I've got Councillor Dupre next. Yeah, okay. I before before we start that, I've got um, Councillor Jones just got a quick query for the police. And sorry, Councillor Dupre. Sorry, thank you. Um, just going back to obviously um, Councillor Bailey's talk. My apologies. Um, Councillor Bailey was talking quite heavily about the traffic um, situation involved there. Uh, do the police have the resources to to to, to manage that uh, type of situation? Would it be something they would involve in? Would have to go to an external one, given the. You know, you don't really enforce on street parking and things like that currently. Um, without being too political, I'm not okay. anything, but you know, it, it's is it an event that you would manage or would you would it have to go down to a so in an event such as this? If there was a large scale event there and people were to arrive and park on grass verges nearby, some people do that these events to not want to pay car parking fees, some people do it to try and exit early. Uh, there's a number of venues around the county that have those sorts of issues that they that they combat um, professionally um, with this venue there are no parking enforcements along there such as w lines so we wouldn't have they wouldn't be enforceable to us unless it was there blocking the road and obstruction so an emergency vehicle couldn't get through then we would look to get that vehicle towed away but obviously that takes time so it's not enforceable it's not nothing is enforceable at this moment in time i think is the answer would we have the resources again would depend on what other things are happening in Cambridgeshire at that time. Thank, thank you for that. So, apologies, Councillor Dupre. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Before I begin, um, I've, I'm speaking in my own uh, role as County Councillor, but I've also been asked by CPRE Cambridgeshire to represent them today. Are you asking, are you, will you be calling me back to do that separately? 
It's your meeting, Chair. I'm in your hands, your decision. Right, in that case, I may need a little longer, I don't know, but. We don't want the meeting to run longer than it need to, but at the same time, I, I want everybody to come away from here feeling they've, they've had the chance to say what they want to say, and that includes the applicant and people in the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and I promise to be as brief as I can. Um, I just wanted to preface my detailed comments with a, a few remarks. Firstly, um, I'm very glad that both you and Councillor Weber have said today very clearly that you can only judge today what is on in front of you on the face of the application. And what is in front of you in the, on the face of the application is an application for 365 days a year, 10 a.m. to now 2 a.m. rather than four, with up to six 24-hour events. That's what the applicant will have permission for if you grant this license today. There's been a lot of misinformation, um, whether accidental or not, around what is actually being requested. Um, and it's therefore really important to be clear that this is a 365 day a year, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. application. Um, it's not, as I've read elsewhere, a 12 days a year um, application. It's not so that there can be an event to raise funds for Ukraine. Welcome, though, that is. This is an all year round uh, overnight um, festival application. Um, I do think also that it's very regrettable that no prior consultation was undertaken either with the council other than beyond the basics of the validation or with the statutory consultees or with the community uh, on whom this has dropped like an absolute bombshell and it's caused huge amounts of concern and I would go so far as to say distress um, and it seems to me that whatever the outcome of today there will be a lot of community building and bridges needing to be built um, as, a, as a result of what has, has happened. And that's extremely upsetting, I think, for, for everybody. This has been a source of huge concern for a long time. Um, many of the concerns that local residents have <clears throat> are not ones that you can take into account today. You can only look at the licensing conditions. And we've heard that a change of use may be required under the planning regime, uh, which may allow those broader issues. And I'm thinking particularly of the impact on the environment, the impact on local wildlife, uh, proximity to Welney, for example, um, and, and also to uh, the equine uh, activities that take place. Those may be able to be considered if there is a requirement for a change of use application, but we don't yet know that uh, as far as I understand it. We don't even know whether that part of the process will be will be required. Um, so in detail, in my role as county councillor, firstly, uh, on crime and disorder, which is something that you can consider, we've just heard about the uh, inability to, uh, to police anything to do with parking on verges because there is no uh, nothing laid down which would uh, be enforceable against. I query, however, whether there is sufficient police resource more generally to cope with something which is so huge. Um, if everybody turned up those 4,999 people, that would be bigger than the entire population of the parish. Um, and that is so far outside the normal uh, events that go on, the normal activities that need to be policed within this district, that I'm not convinced that there is sufficient capacity. Um, there will be alcohol, flowing, uh, we've seen that for many hours, up till 2 a.m., in an area with no public transport. So, uh, and there's no plan as to how people will get to, or even more importantly, where alcohol is involved from the venue. Uh, there may well be an increase in driving under the influence of, of alcohol or even possibly drugs. Um, and drink driving is going to be a risk to public safety. And I think it's one we cannot afford, to, you cannot afford to ignore or, or overlook or take on trust. Um, we have heard that there may be buses or mini buses taking people to and from this event. There's certainly no local taxi capacity sufficient to cope with 4,999 people. But 
um, as you've already heard from, uh, from Councillor Bailey, Main Street through Little Downham, which is one of the main routes up from the, uh, the A10, the A142, is already very heavily congested. We have heard about people uh, having a knock on their door from an HGV driver at five o'clock in the morning saying, can you move your car? I need to get through. There are lots of agricultural vehicles wending their way along that route in order to get from uh, one farm, one field to another. So there is a huge amount of traffic along that area, which is the main route through the village, parked on either side. Uh, and, and that's going to be, firstly, uh, a, a public safety issue with people trying to maybe cross the road or getting caught up in traffic and getting frustrated. It will be a hazard and it will be, I think, also a public nuisance throughout the, the main street of, of Little Downham and indeed probably further afield. Um, We've heard about the road up through uh, Coveney and um, Wayhead and Downham Hyth into the location. That's really not suitable, as uh, the district councillor has already said. And uh, the condition of the road down from the A1101 along the 100 foot is, is also not really in, suitable for large volumes of, of traffic at odd hours of day and night. Um, further to that, um, the speed along Westmore Common, uh, past this venue, is currently 60 miles an hour for traffic. There are no or few pavements, um, and they may well be parked up with, with revellers who come along and park on those verges. And that must prove a danger to people stumbling out at two o'clock in the morning into perhaps 60 mile an hour traffic in an area with which they may be totally unfamiliar having come 30, 40, 50 miles or even more to attend the event. This is a very flat area of, of the, uh, the country um, and noise and light already travel widely in that flat landscape. There's nothing to block it much more widely than in men, many other places. Um, there's already been a significant increase in light pollution in the area. And I've recently received a number of complaints about that from other facilities, um, not from this one, but this can only make that situation worse. Um, and as a county councillor, I've had representations on the wildlife impact, which I say, uh, as I say, I'm afraid is none of your concern today, unfortunately. So for all those reasons, I think there are real concerns, justified concerns about the 365 day a year into to 2 a.m. nature of this application, the sheer volume in a place that is so ill-equipped to cope with all of those effects. Speaking briefly then as uh, on behalf of CPRE Cambridgeshire, who have asked me to speak today as they cannot be here, um, they have raised similar concerns about crime and disorder, the unsuitability of the remote rural location, the impact of alcohol and possibly drugs on um, uh, crime uh, behaviour. Uh, the lack of public transport, the narrow country roads with people maybe driving under the influence, um, and the numbers expected and the difficulty of policing that effectively. They've also raised the issue in public safety terms of the limited hedgerows and boundaries that uh, delineate different farms, fields and parts of the area. And there is a worry that they have expressed that crowds exiting the venue may stray onto the fields, may damage crops, uh, that people may leave the venue and not only stumble into that 60 mile an hour traffic, but could also fall into the drainage ditches that are uh, prevalent in the area and that that could be a risk to those coming to the venue. Um, also, the, the potential, they, they fear that uh, householders nearby who may want to be challenging people leaving the venue noisily and asking for peace and quiet, uh, that they fear that there may be the potential for abuse or even attack, particularly if people are in a state where they've uh, had a long night with a lot of alcohol in a very noisy environment. Uh, so there's concern from them for the safety of Pymore residents, as well as the safety of those attending the venue. They comment also on the excessive noise, uh, excessive light, which will be significantly increased, and also the noise nuisance. And they have drawn reference to the WHO guidelines for community noise. Uh, you, it's already been mentioned that the noise study that you have in your pack is actually for noise arising from the, the crisp factory operation, not from 
the uh, what is proposed uh, and they draw attention to the references in the WHO guidelines for the impact of, of noise even at lower levels which may not damage one's hearing but which will have an effect on the ability to sleep and consequent health effects from that uh, they're also worried for all the above reasons uh, about the uh, the protection of children and the safety of children uh, those are the comments from CPRE which they have asked me to make to this committee today Okay, thank you, Councillor Dupree. Any questions? No, no, I don't think so. Any, no, any questions of Councillor Dupree? The applicants, have you got any questions at this stage of Councillor Dupree? Okay, in which case, thank you for that. And as I say, Okay, um, yeah, the, I've got a list here but all, um, of people who've registered to attend, but not all of those have signed in, so I'm assuming not, not all of those are here. Um, and I'm going to vary it slightly in that I know um, Claire Magnus is, is here representing a number of people, so maybe it, 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 I'll ask her to um, come forward and, and do that next and then... Um, I will, I will, as I go through the list, I'll, um, mention names just in case that somebody's come here and hasn't signed this list, so I don't want them sat here and, and not get a chance, but certainly a number of people who have registered to speak have not, appear not to be here. Okay, Claire, over to you. Yeah. Hello, Chairman and everybody else. Thank you for listening to our responses from the abduction group. My name is Claire Marie and I'm here to represent the Willow Farm Objection Group, which comprises of over 200 members, a cross section of people who were profoundly impacted by this licensing proposal if it was to be supported. Most members were only alerted of the application through social media. Many others were unaware, despite efforts made by the East Cambridgeshire District Council which are restricted by the licensing regulation guidelines that appear to be inadequate for proposals of this scale. No attempts were made by the applicant, who is well known to the area, to liaise with his local community regarding any of his plans, let alone be interested in the opinions of his fellow neighbours and community at large. Nevertheless, within 10 days of learning about these proposals, our villages grew a voice so they could express their deep concerns about how this would affect their daily lifestyles and the community we live in. This is a summary of, our, of their concerns. First, crime. In 2021, our city and surrounding villages were ranked the top five most safest small towns in Cambridgeshire and no doubt choose to live in our villages because of this. Crime statistics in the UK indicate that when public gatherings take place, criminal activities often increase. The threat to our neighbourhoods is clear and the proposed events would inflict extra strain on our already stretched police and other emergency services. Second, public safety. The site is in a rural location served by narrow roads, many in poor state of repair and with no pedestrian pass alongside. There is no railway station within walking distance and public transport is practically non-existent. Most of the traffic to the site would pass through Little Downham High Street with other routes as Pineball, B1411, the High Black Bank Road and the A1101 also being affected. An influx of people and vehicles on the scale implied by these proposals would grossly mainstain the area Everyday living would be affected, increasing the risk of activity and dwarfing the normal volume of traffic, 
creating significant disruptions for residents and those working in agriculture. Many residents enjoy their peaceful surroundings and take in the beautiful landscapes by walking, cycling and riding. Third, public nuisance, including protecting children from harm. The application pays no heed to the profound negative impact such events would have on a day-to-day -day life in our surroundings, rural communities. We value the quietness of these areas. We value our hardworking citizens who rely on a good night's sleep, despite, oh sorry, good night's sleep due to very early morning starts. And we value our children being adequately rested for school. This application threatens all these values. With a substantial number of elderly people, including a residential home, who look after dementia residents less than one mile from the site, this would cause a huge negative impact on their lives and mental well-being. Fourth, environmental damage. The site is within visual and hearing range of one of England's most valuable and protected wildlife sites, the ooze washes. The noise and light generated by the proposed activities would negatively impact the natural environment over a vast area of open countryside, impacting birds, mammals and invertebrates alike. Finally, it has been brought to our attention, speculation has emerged, that this business proposal would serve charitable and fundraising events. However, no additional information has been submitted to verify these intentions. Such events can be held using a TENS agreement, or the applicant could have registered as a charity if this was indeed the intention. This application must only be considered within its entirety. For the sole purpose the applicant wants it to be used for, this must exclude any other matters that serve no connection to it or in the future. In conclusion, the proposal is overwhelmingly opposed by people living in the area that I represent today. They and the area we live in will be adversely affected by the events planned and we cannot support this application, which would primarily serve for the non-resident population to the detriment of the majority of locals. Our members will con continue to unite if any further applications should arrive. Thank you for considering our response. Okay, thank you for that. Members, any questions? No. Maggie, no, any questions? Any questions from the applicants? No. Okay, in which case, thank you for that. Can I just say one thing from my personal application? Okay, yes. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to cover everything because we're, we're going to be repetitive, but I have noticed from a personal point of view that since I've become a representative of the objection group, that the applicant and his fellow associates have mentioned my name, my home and my business, which is of no relevance in social media or outside social media. So I would like that to be reported on this account today. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like just to comment on yeah, that. Yeah, I'll allow uh, that, yeah. Um, that's very unfair, Claire. I am fighting a flooding campaign. We've got a major disaster in our area, which just happens to be outside this young lady's house. And the main point where it could burst is outside this young lady's house. I've headed that up. And Anna and Laura will tell everyone we've made an incredible job of making this problem public to try and resolve this flooding issue. And nothing has been said um, personally. Claire, I've also had people threaten me from your side. So, and I'm not petty to bring that up. So please, I've not, nothing personal at all from me. Yeah, I don't want to go down a, a, a line on this, but I'll allow you to come back. But really, I don't want to get into um, that sort of slanging match. Not that it was bad, but sorry, go on. I just want to say, I appreciate what you say, but this matter has only arisen since I opened the objection group. And whilst you did film um, outside my property, 
which the flooding has obviously happened a lot before such matters have arisen. I saw you and you didn't even have the decency to knock on my door and state about no. my home and yeah. my business being involved. Okay, and I think we need to... According to GTBR, I think that shouldn't be... Yeah, okay, I think we need to draw a line under that. Um, I just between... wanted to get across yeah, okay. my... Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank you very um, much. Thanks, thanks, Alec. Um, yeah, I just will go down the list just to make sure people are here but haven't signed. I've got, um, I'm looking, Dr. Matilda Becker's not here. No, in which case I'll go on to the next people who have signed in. I've got Michael Blakey. No. Well, it's Mr. and Mrs. Blakey, but they've signed, Michael signed in. They're obviously gone. Okay. And I've got Anne Brown. Do I just press this? Is that right? Yes, it's got the lights on, so you're fine. So okay. over to you. Thank you. Um, I have filled in my um, form with my objections, which have been covered already. So I'm not going to waste anyone's time by going through the wall. Um, I've agreed with virtually all, everything that people have said so far. Just one point, um, which no one seems to have picked up on, and I, it did concern me when I saw it. Um, it's on. Could, could you move them like slightly closer to you? I, Sorry. I, I don't know about yeah. others. I'm, I'm having to make sure that you better? can be heard. Yeah, because it's okay. important, I've, it's important, the, live, it's important the live screen pick it up as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yes, one point which I was very concerned about, and it's um, um, agenda item number five. Um, it's the application, and it says on 3.3. .3, Sale by retail of alcohol for consumption on and off the premises. Now, I immediately had, um, pro probably quite wrongly, a scene where carloads of people were driving up, purchasing alcohol and leaving again, which I don't think would be, in other words, treating it as an out of hours pub. I don't know whether that's what it was meant, but I can't see why that the alcohol should be consumed off the premises. Um, that's just a, a, a minor point. Um, apart from that, I really don't have a lot else to add to what's been said already. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, members, any questions? Yeah. yeah, Lynn, I think if you can clarify the off alcohol. I know you're trying to juggle two things. Do I? Thank you. Um, on sales of alcohol, obviously, the sales of alcohol on the premises. Uh, the problem with um, on sales of alcohol only is that um, if the on sales of alcohol take place within the building, um, that means that obviously they have to be delineated um, exactly where the sales of alcohol are going to be. Um, so it, this is a, a difficult one without the full knowledge of what is going to happen there or where the events are actually going to take place, um, then um, you can make a sale of alcohol within a premises and then the off-sale would be people taking it outside and drinking. Um, the, uh, the, the, the other issue is that um, if a camping site or anything like that was uh, agreed within a planning um, uh, uh, consent, then obviously um, people could then, as an off sale, take their drinks into an area that wasn't licensed, i.e. back to their campsite or whatever. But without the full details of this, 
um, we, we licensing would not know what what was covered, and we don't make an um, an observation on that as long as the application is valid, i.e., it meets the criteria of the licensing act. It is down then to um, to the responsible authorities and other parties to question which you've done as to exactly what is going to happen with that. Thank you, Lynn. Right. So um, you okay, that covers. Is that it? You want to come in? Now? Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, not to you. Actually, to Lynn, if I may. Um, can I just clarify with the um, the adjacent fields next to it? Would they come under, would they be classed as off sales or would they be part of the license and the temporary applications for license? Would you expect that to, so? The, 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 the issue is, is that, you know, the, the, the site is, is ha, has, it's a site which, which does include um, a, a building. And so obviously, as long as everything is delineated, um, then on sales could could be okay because they could they could consume the alcohol anywhere on that premises. It's an on sale. The premises is the field and the building. It's where they um, that, that that is not obvious. What where where the the, the the sale of alcohol is going to 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 emanate from, and also are they going to then take it elsewhere? So I I guess that by saying on and off sales. That they they then can decide, um, you know, where the um, where where the alcohol is going to be sold from, but you know, um, it it is this so it, taken away from the low farm. If you have a building, and you want it for a, a a wedding, and you want to make the sale of alcohol in in that building, then if people take the the their drinks outside and that area is not delineated on the premises plan. Then they shouldn't be drinking outside. So that's where on and off sales come. You 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 have to make sure that the area that 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 you want the on sales to be is actually properly delineated. And then you couldn't, if you had a campsite next door, the people couldn't take the um the, the alcohol into the campsite. You'd have to have people that's fine. stopping I just them look at the clarity on what's on sales and off yeah. sales. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Um, right, could I just say thank you for that because I took to be um, off the premises as off the whole site. So you purchase the alcohol, then you can take it off the whole site, but that's obviously it not right. There, there is nothing to stop them doing that oh. if they have off sales. There is nothing to stop them doing that. Okay. It's just that on and off sales don't just mean you can drink it on the premises or off the premises, it also means where. You know, if there are other factors involved, but yes, it does. It does at the bottom end. It does mean that they can drink on the site, or people can take drinks off the site as well. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Any other questions? Um, no. Looking at um, statutory, no questions. No, I was going to say, with, with that, what Applicants, do you do you have any questions of the? No, no. Okay, great. Thank you. Hello. Um, Over to you, Oliver. Well, sorry, let me just remember my mask. Um, most of what I had to say today has been covered. Sorry, if excuse my voice is going at the moment. Um, um, no, my main concerns are a couple of things. My mother, who you've just heard from, is Anne Brown. She lives up near Oxlode, which is just off um, between Pymore and Little Downham. Um, the majority of people that live in the local area are elderly people and a few young families, teenage families, to bring an event like this to their front door is unreasonable. 
for many reasons, into fights going to bring disruption and crime, especially to their area. I grew up in East London and I didn't live a sheltered life. I know the dangers of drugs and organised crime coming to an area and I'm as the police well are. And I, I'm sure that kind of stemming from this event, we are going to have backlashes and problems from such organisations and situations. I am worried about the traffic situation, which at times of night is used, the road, very local roads around there are used like racetracks anyway. Um, and the fact that people are going to be drink driving and, how, and events like Oktoberfest are going to be held in the middle of an, a, a place where there is no public transport, no, no walking available to anywhere, nothing. It's going to be an Oktoberfest based on car travel, which already says to me it's a bad idea. It's just one event that was mentioned. I'm not saying it would happen. As, as I, say. Um, I There's been a lot of mention about sound pollution. Now, I, I, I've read the report that was, or I tried to make sense of the report that was handed in and included. And again, as mentioned, other people have mentioned, it's about farm machinery. Now, last Saturday, we, used, we had an experiment. We had a 10 watt speaker set up 2 point, uh, 1, uh, 0.86, 0 0.76 miles away from uh, my mother's house. It was then put on full volume and being 0.76 miles away, I could hear clearly the music and the laughter that was going on at the barbecue. Um, the sound spreads far. I can hear car horns from the main road up at my parents' house, my mother's house. The, the idea that this, this sound is not going to travel and the light is not going to be a problem is ridiculous. When Caucus Crisp was a factory, before it, had exact, before it got uh, burnt down or whatever happened to it, there were lights on that factory that shone out bright and could be seen from, our, from my mother's housing. More events like Tom Jones events, I don't know where this idea of Tom Jones coming to the Downham has come from, but it's quite frankly, it's a bit of a shame that's taken this silly, jokingly. But the point is, noise will travel and pollution will travel. And as far as crime and problems go, I'm already dreading the situations I'm going to have to entail myself into or encounter for myself in when my 76-year-old mother has people turning up on her doorstep wanting to sit on her front lawn because she lives in a lovely house and wanting to sit near the, near the river near her and things. I am not going to put up with people coming up to the area and, and dropping litter. Already I pick up litter from people that walk their dogs up there, people that should know better and should know to respect the area anyway. But then I, I want to make sure that the residents of this area or the local residents are kept safe and and that they will not be threatened and put out of, out of comfort in the homes that they've got used to. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you. Any questions, Mr. Brown? Any applicants? Any questions, Mr. Brown? No. Okay. Thank you for that. I've got a few gaps here, so I'll, but I'll go through the names very quickly just to make sure that. The, Dawn Clark, Maureen Collins, Ian Crawley. The next one I've got you signed in is Deborah Curtis. Okay, Deborah, it's over to you. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be brief. A lot of my objections have been covered in in. in Ad infinitum. Um, I would just like to make some points uh, about our event management. I'm the director of a theatre and arts company. Um, we have uh, many dealings over the years with licensing and we produce event management plans, which are you know, part of our job. Uh, funnily enough, we're always willing to share our event management plans with anyone who wants to see them. It's about sharing expertise as much as anything and transparency. Um, but getting on to this application, Mr. Taylor has been quoted in the press as saying there's a great deal of confusion and mis misinformation about this application. And I would suggest that most of this arises from the application itself. <clears throat> He states that his agent has submitted a broad brush application 
in the press. I would suggest it is more scattergun than broad brush. He further states actually that his main aim was to revitalize events, community events such as the Pymore Show. However, there is no mention of the Pymore Show or any similar events in the application or in any of his subsequent submissions, which does seem to be a significant omission for such an all encompassing broad brush application. And I sincerely doubt that over 200 people would have formed an objection group to object to the right revitalization of the Pymore Show. In my personal opinion, the application has been so mismanaged and is so amateurish that if an application cannot be made properly, what confidence does it inspire in the actual management of real events? I would say not very much. And um, I'd just like to say one more thing. Anything uh, like the, the company, is it Big Sky Venues, or, um, uh, was founded in May of this year. And therefore they have no experience whatsoever, to the best of my knowledge, in any kind of event management, let alone large scale events such as proposed in this licensing application. That's all I want to say, thank you. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Any members, any questions? No. Applicants, have you got any questions? Thank you very much. In which case, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, as my colleagues just saying, I'm conscious we've been going for two and a half hours now, but um, looking at the list, we haven't got many people happy to, to carry on for a little longer. We'll see how we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I've got a sheet here virtually with no names on it at all, so uh, or signed in, sorry, but I'll, so I'll go very quickly through them. I've got Angela Diamond, then I've got Ashley Doctors, Karen Doctors, these are all people who haven't signed in, so I'm, I just want to make sure they're not missed. Gary Dunnington, Alison England, Mr and Mrs SNL Golding. Mr. and Mrs. N and P Golding, Mr. and Mrs. Graves, Mark Hebbard, Mark Collington, Delphine Ionio, I'm, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Mr. and Mrs. Kerridge. So then move on to the final list. Mr. and Mrs. Maxi. Yeah. Mr. Maxi uh, has messaged Dr. Bailey and myself to say that he is unable to. Okay. Okay, thank you, Lorna. Mr. and Mrs. Moore. And then I've got the next person signed in is Chris Nye. Okay, Chris. I would say good morning, but it's now good afternoon, everybody. Um, we farm a field alongside the site, um, a grass field, and as such, we'd have cattle in it. Well, cattle and events like this don't go hand in glove. Um, so we'd have to move them every time an event was planned. We also have a large straw barn in the field, which takes up to 800 bales, um, which if they're letting off fireworks, it's not very handy. Um, fireworks in the middle of an arable area are not a good idea either. And if you say people don't let off fireworks, there were some idiots set some off on the Ties Road just last week on the beat pad there. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not really in favour of it. That's about all I've got to say. Everything else is covered. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions? Any questions from the applicant? In which case, thank you, thank Chris, you. for that. The next person I've got is, hopefully I pronounce correct, your, your first name, Catriona Roscoe. So I won't repeat everything that's been said. I think 
um, it's been said ad infinitum, but just to address the lack of detail and what could happen if there is a try it and see approach. And for that, I would um, amplify a representation, uh, um, amplify a point for my representation about precedent in this area. So I work in a field where we, we look at precedent a lot. And I urge the, the license commi licensing committee not to head down the same path has been, uh, that has been done elsewhere. <laughs> so between the villages of Northor and Cuffley, there's a farm site which is extremely similar to this one. It has a license application that was almost identical, now limited to 6,000 and 3,000 um, people. Although those villages are arguably bigger, have better facilities, have public transport, have a bigger police presence and actually have pavements. Nevertheless, the site is that rural location between two villages and populations either side of it. So in my representation, you can look it up or you can Google it. You can see what Little Downham and Pymore could become with this. As despite these villages being more developed, they're potentially more able to cope with the pressures of such a venue, local residents in the area have been subjected to an increase in criminal behaviour, manifesting as drug use, crimes under the Road Traffic Act, and even grievous bodily harm taking place on the roads outside the venue. In terms of nuisance, this has ranged from residents in the village having to cope with traffic control problems, and that's even without adding the movement of agricultural machinery that we have in our area, um, especially at the moment, at the moment the roads are clogged with um, the combine harvesters getting from one field to another as quick as they can. But as well as that, those residents have also have other nuisance from noise, from antisocial behaviour, and that's included residents having to listen to foul language at one end of the scale, but also fighting and even people engaging in sexual acts in public. And all of this is a, an event that's actually now limited to 9 or 10 p.m. at night. And it demonstrates that even limitations are not going to fix this problem. The parish council there, as is the case with our parish council, has been unable to help the residents due to the nature of the licensing legislation. And the council, Wellwyn and Hatfield Borough Council, can't have tried to revoke the license, but the applicant has appealed it. It's gone to the magistrate. And so their programme, six summer fest festivals, very similar to the license application here, will go ahead while the magistrates decide, and the residents will continue to live a miserable life with risk of crime, threat to safety, and dealing with this ongoing nuisance. Excuse me, Chair, can I just, can, can I just yes, ask sir. what the relevance is to, to this application? Yeah, I was, I was starting to think no, that. No, but I want to see it's what because I'm saying it's exactly... Licensing. We're talking about a completely okay. different mm -hmm. licensing. No, yes, I'm, I'm giving an example that. of what, how difficult it is to revoke that license once these problems okay. occur. Well, can we, can we sort of make it relevant to this application though, please? Yeah, yep, yep. of course, of course. So with relevance to this application, the organisers have not caught, don't provide clarity to police, to the council, to the licence, which makes it difficult for those who would normally support and protect safety to do so with a flurry of documents. And, and that's something that we've seen here with that flurry of documents that for the large part bear no relevance. For example, the um, noise um, assessment that was submitted went up to a factory noise level of 83 decibels. And actually, if you look in my representation, I've referenced an article for you there that reports that festival noise is actually 100 decibels. So that's Tronstadt from 2016. Um, and having that booming noise going out across the fens at 100 decibels is massively different to 83 decibels that's been measured in that. So given that the used washers is the epicentre of the proposed UNESCO Fen biosphere, whilst that may not happen, it's still an opportunity for our area to create great centres for agricultural innovation, conservation science and ecotourism. We shouldn't be engaging in a race to sink our area to the bottom with increased crime and antisocial behaviour. I lived in Sunderland and I know what it's like and it's not what we want for our area. So we need, to, we need to not make our villages a no-go area. We shouldn't inflict damage on our agricultural businesses and only create low-wage, zero-hour jobs. So I urge the licensing committee to put the community and the environment at the centre of their decision and refuse this licence. 
Okay, thank you for that. Members, any questions? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, just to clarify, a lot of the environmental aspects don't come under necessarily the, the, the four, we can only view it on the four licensing objectives. So that's what we, we will be For the doing. environmental part, yeah, but the rest of it. Um, applicants, any questions? Well, not <clears throat> the, um, you know, I'm heavily involved with um, the environmental side because um, I'm right next to the Royal Fail Trust and I've spoken to them all and they actually say, you know, bring, we, we need we need more people to come and visit our centres. That's not going to affect the wildlife at all. And that's straight from the horse's mouth. So, you know, it's natural England we're involved with and everyone. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not going to hurt that, anything. That's more a statement than a question, but I'll, I'll, I'll allow it in the context of what it is. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're nearly to the end of the list now. Um, I've got Catherine Ronsiman. Okay, thank, thank, thank you for your time today. I'll press that, sorry. Um, I'm Catherine Ransman. Um, we farm um, a couple of fields next door to the proposed site. Um, so my concerns are, in addition to the ones that have already been mentioned, are basically fire. Um, there has been at least three fires along that road, the Caucus site, uh, Chris and I, who spoke just now, he had a fire previously in his shed, and there's been a straw stack uh, further towards Pinewall in recent years. Um, that's with the population as it is, um, suspected arson for some of them. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just a concern. Um, so that's, you know, that's one of our concerns. And then this time of year, the, the crops standing in the fields themselves are a problem. Um, rubbish. Uh, we farm haylage, which is a crop which is fed hay and haylage, which is fed to animals, horses, mainly horses over at Newmarket. We can't afford for any rubbish, particularly to get into that those bales. Um, previously, when the caucus site was functional, I would be walking the fields to collect the rubbish uh, glass bottles, um, whatever was in the field prior to picking up the grass. With an event, with events like this, people might go into the fields and there will be additional um, rubbish, which is what I'm, I'm concerned about. Um, if a cow, for example, swallows a piece of metal, the metal actually makes its way towards its heart and then the animal dies. So. Uh, the, you know, the animals in the field next door, which are cattle, if, they've, if, they've, if it's put into the field, it can cause um, problems. Um, we um, also have sheep on that farm, on the field next door at certain times of the year. The sheep farmer only uses electric fencing. Um, you know, traditionally they move them from one field to another with electric fencing. I'm just concerned about um, safety in the fact that if, um, there were people around on the site. Would they be able to see the electric fencing at, at night time because there's no, because of the lighting is poor? Would they go into the fencing? Then the sheep get on the road, cause accidents. It's, you know, they're, they're not there permanently, but it's just, you know, um, a factor. Um, so animals getting loose on from either from the cattle from the field one side and the other. Is are my my concerns, you know, personally. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. For that. Um, members, any questions? Um, applicants, any questions? No. In which case, thank you very much for your. Thank you. I've now got Nick Nick Sampes. No, he's obviously gone. 
Um, Jane Tidy and Peter Vass haven't signed in. So I'm, the last one on the list who has signed in is Nicolette Woodhead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Despite the wealth of last minute alterations, in my view, this application fails to adequately demonstrate how the four licensing objectives would be promoted. Partly this is because of the highly fluid and wide ranging business plan, which we've already talked about, but partly it's through the lack of demonstration of thought through practical solutions. We've talked a lot about parking and transport. I'd just like to add to that, that given the advertisement of on-site parking, plus the lack of public transport, plus the cost of a taxi, which is roughly 32 pounds return from Ely Station, plus the um, free, the availability of alcohol for very long hours, one is effectively encouraging drink driving and or drug driving. On the reduction in opening hours, I can't see how this mitigates the risks to public safety or public nuisance at all. And it's interesting that of the festivals in Cambridgeshire on a, a similar scale or the events, they tend to start at lunchtime and none of them go on beyond half past 11 at night, certainly not into the early hours. The statement in the, the, the latest editions that there's no intention of disturbing the area around the venue is meaningless in our local rural context. Disturbance would be massive, and we've already heard this detailed by other speakers, so I won't go in, into that. But I do want to, to draw people's attention to some of the proposed activities under the multi-event um, scenario. A fairground, for example, would certainly enhance both noise and sound pollution significantly. And public safety, namely from fire, would be certainly not promoted by the use of fireworks, pyrotechnics, live flame, and so forth, which also appears to be envisaged. So a sample event management plan simply comprises a, a series of headings, where's the evidence that um, adequate planning has, has gone on. I'm particularly concerned, however, about the lack of consideration in the application given to the protection of children from harm. Why is it necessary to sell alcohol from 10 in the morning, including during school holidays, when children are um, going to be around. Um, and given that there is a public right of way, um, it would be very easy for people to access the site to and from. Um, and in practice, how are staff going to prevent proxy sales or underage drinking or alcohol indeed being brought into the site, given the wide open external spaces. The linkages between alcohol and violence against the person on the one hand and alcohol and sexual offences in the other is well documented. In fact, over half of sexual offences avoid in, have both the perpetrator and or the victim drunk. So there is a clearly demonstrated factual link here. And I'm also concerned that there's nothing other than a heading devoted to drug dealing and consumption. There have been at least 14 drugs related deaths of younger people at UK festivals between 2017 and 2021. And the county lines model of organized drug dealing has been identified by the Cambridgeshire Against County Lines campaign, which reported in 2020 as a major harm. And in fact, they produced a video um, warning people what the signs were to, to, to look out for. There have already been this year, two series of county lines related drugs 
arrests in Cambridgeshire, including people from fairly close, um, e.g. Chatteris and Whispeach. I think those are the, the main points that I, I, I want to make. Um, so I call on the committee to reject the application. Thank you. Thank you for that. Members, any questions? No, in which case, thank you very much for your, your time. Okay, we, sorry, we, we finished, that, that is the, all of the list of, of people who've registered to speak. Um, sorry, Lynn, you wanted to? Okay, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that was my understanding that Claire earlier on was speaking as part of that representing the 68, but obviously you're quite right, we need to minute that properly, but um, again, as I said earlier, I don't, obviously, you know, we've been going nearly three hours, I don't want to stop people, but at the same time, I want people to leave here thinking they've had the chance to say everything they wanted to say, okay, yeah, thank you, Lynn, in which case we move to the last item, on the agenda, which is to, over to the applicants to sum up and bring up any points they wish to in support of their application. It's as little as, or as much as you want to say, within reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've took on board everything everyone said and everyone's got valid points. And I think if I sit and like wire up, <clears throat> Two and a half years ago, I lost my factory, which employed 110 people. I still haven't got my plan and application through to rebuild it. We have to make a living like everybody else, and we've got to have options in place. And this all started out as a charity thing. Um, I live next door, or just down the road. My mother lives in the garden. And trust me, if that's a nuisance, she'll be giving me a earache. So it's not all um, one way, but ultimately, um, you know, I've took on board everything. You know, I think we could have done things probably a bit more. Um, we don't need it to be open. We are just worried about flexibility. And if, if you wanted to make amendments to times, We'd be open for that because we're not want we don't want 24 hours a day seven days a week so that sounds horrendous and it's a um <clears throat> we're open for suggestions we're open for suggestions for events we don't tolerate drugs you know we, we we employ a lot of people so we deal with everything you could imagine because we've got places all over the country with different sorts of things going on so, you know, it's a, we're open-minded with this project um, and we just want it to bring goodness to the community, not badness, because I don't want it to be bad. I don't want to be burning nothing down. I don't want to be doing nothing. So um, I'm open for suggestions, really. But ultimately, I need my planning application sorted out for corpus because one year, you know, we sit here, you know, and that's nothing to do with it, but 110 jobs. And there's people around me getting planning permission to build horse stables, and I had 110 people employed, and we, that's not took seriously. So that's the main thing. It's a British brand, jobs we need to look after, as well as this, plan, this application. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Obviously, we're here. We, we can only adjudicate on licensing aspects, not planning. So planning aspects are, are for another committee. Um, that brings us to the end of our proceedings. Um, and as I said earlier, um, and for those members of the public watching on um, the live stream, we will now go into private session. And the only, I think we're going to have a, 
probably a 10 minute break before we do that. Um, but um, we were going to lock um, into closed session and the only person in the room with us, with the three of us will be Maggie, who is purely there to advise us on legal aspects. And we will then make our decision. And under the legislation, we have five days to communicate that decision, but obviously we would hope to communicate that earlier. Thank you. Thank you everybody for attending and hopefully you felt you've had a fair chance to say what you wanted to say. Great, thank you. Thank you.